The following is a special presentation of TNN Sports. Good afternoon and welcome to New Hampshire International Speedway in Loudoun, New Hampshire. I'm Eli Gold. For the second time in 58 days, we join you from New Hampshire, shaken by the loss of a friend. Two months ago, Adam Petty. This week, Kenny Irwin. An accident here Friday morning, claiming the life of one of racing's youngest stars at the tender age of 30. Most all of our pre-race coverage today will focus on this tragedy. We'll find out how the drivers are faring. We'll hear from the sanctioning body. We'll talk to the fans. We'll, in general, just bring you the feel of what is a very unfortunate weekend here in the Granite State of New Hampshire. Dr. Dick Berggren, as per usual, is alongside. And, and Dick, one thing is for sure, it's been a very unusual day today. The atmosphere in the garage this morning, just downright strange. Uh, it was eerie this morning in the garage, Eli. The crews went about the business of preparing for today's race with their heads down and their eyes focused on the job ahead. No jokes today, just thinking about whatever they could other than what happened here on Friday morning. Nuts, bolts, engines, setups, tires. These men lost one of their own, a friend, a brother, and they're dealing with it by turning wrenches and by racing. We, too, will focus on the race, but as we do, Kenny Irwin's memory will be on our minds. Hall of Fame driver Buddy Baker is alongside. To say that this is a difficult weekend is an understatement. Eli, it's very difficult for the crews, for the drivers, and every driver as he goes into this event today has Kenny Irwin in the back of his mind. Everybody thinks about it, but they realize they have a job to do today, and they'll do it the best they can, but they certainly won't forget Ernie Irwin. Irwin. Kenny Irwin was a fine young racer. When he came to NASCAR, he had a wonderful series of credentials that really heralded exactly what we expected he would become, and that was a NASCAR Winston Cup Rookie of the Year. Kenny Irwin was an outstanding USAC star, but when he came to NASCAR, there was a learning curve. But trust me, folks, from his days in open wheel competition, sprints, midgets, silver crown, you just knew that victory lane was going to be the regular address for Kenny Irwin. Regretfully, in NASCAR Winston Cup, that is one career goal that will remain unattained. Let's go trackside now. Here's Glenn Jarrett. Well, thanks, Eli. Just like everyone else down here, as, as I stand here, it's just really hard for me to believe that less than two months after the Adam Petty tragedy, that once again, the NASCAR racing family is forced to deal with another loss of life. And like Adam Petty, just like you said, Kenny Irwin was one of NASCAR's brightest young rising stars on their horizon. He had a lot of promise. There's no doubt about that. In his days in USAC, he won two Rookie of the Year titles there. Then he came to NASCAR and won two more in the Craftsman Truck Series and, like you said, in the NASCAR Winston Cup Series. It was obvious, evident, the amount of promise that that career held. Now, like you say, it will have to go unfulfilled. My thoughts and my prayers are with Kenny Irwin's friends and his family. We lost an extremely nice young man here on Friday. Here's Steve Burns. Thanks, Glenn. It's so hard to know what to say because nothing we can say will bring Kenny Irwin back. You know, just a moment ago, Eli Gold referred to Kenny Irwin as a racer. Folks, that's the ultimate term of respect in this sport. Not to be called Mr., but to be called a racer. And that's what Kenny Irwin was. He was also a stand-up guy. You know, when he got in that 28 car, he endured some criticism. He never ducked the media. He'd always answer a question, always polite about doing so. Kenny Irwin was a racer, and he was also a stand-up guy, Ralph. Whether he was putting the right rear of his midget in the cushion at Terre Haute or drafting at Daytona, Kenny Irwin was just that, Steve. He was a real racer, and he loved nothing more in this life than to do that, climb behind the wheel of a race car and give it everything he had. And he earned a great deal of admiration from his fellow competitors for that very reason. A lot of the drivers that you've talked to here this weekend, including names like Tony Stewart, will tell you he was the toughest competitor they ever faced. Some of the NASCAR Winston Cup drivers never got to see the full complement of what Kenny Irwin could do behind the wheel of a race car. Unfortunately, we won't have that chance. But for those of us who have seen Kenny behind the wheel doing what he did best, it truly was magical. Unfortunately, for now, the magic is gone. When we come back, 
the reaction of other drivers to the passing of Kenny Irwin, and we'll spend time with NASCAR's Mike Helton. All of that coming up. Welcome back to the New Hampshire International Speedway. Some high clouds today, but 95,000 plus fans are expected as per usual for the thatlook.com 300. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Eli Gold. You know, drivers are hesitant to talk about a tragedy on the racetrack, but at the same time, we all lost a friend, let alone a co-competitor. Ralph Shaheen had a chance earlier this week to talk with the drivers, and Ralph, Everybody, in addition to that note of friendship, had a note of sorrow, certainly, to their voices. Absolutely, Eli. You know, anytime you have the opportunity to watch a true craftsman work his specialty, it's incredible. And Kenny Irwin was absolutely an artist at his craft. We talked to the drivers about that. I raced with Kenny for nine years, and, and you know, ever since I moved down to the three-quarter midgets into full midgets, he was the guy I had to race hard each week, and if I wanted to win the race, he was the guy I had to beat each week. So, uh, you know, it, it's just one of those weird things. I mean, ever since we've moved into Winston Cup, I mean, every time I get a practice sheet, I, the first thing I do is look to see where he is and look to see where Bobby Labonte is. So, uh, it's just hard. I mean, it, he was a great racer. I mean, in the 21 years I've raced, there was nobody tougher than he was. I mean, it didn't matter whether it was a midget on dirt or a silver crown car or a sprint car on pavement. It didn't matter. He was he was a contender to win every week. And, uh, you know, I, I heard a quote yesterday. I don't that people thought that they hadn't seen the best of Kenny Irwin in a Winston Cup car. I agree. We all think that the most important thing in, in the world is this racing, but it's really not. And uh, this is a good example of why it's not. You know, it's, uh, it's a great sport. It's a competitive sport. It's great to watch. It's great to participate in it is dangerous at times and um, this kind of shows you that there are things more important than just racing there's nothing you can say that that um, that makes anybody feel any better and um, you know and every time somebody brings it up to me it just it, it's hard to think about you know, Eli, I had the opportunity to watch Kenny come up through the ranks of his racing career in open wheels and midgets and silver crown and ASA and trucks and Winston Cup. And he really was a master craftsman. He was that, Ralph. You know, many people have asked, should you race in the aftermath of a tragedy? Should you not? It's an emotional issue. Mike Helton is NASCAR's senior vice president and chief operating officer. NASCAR is more like a community, and, and if a citizen of a community uh, passes away, the community still has to go on. The lights have to work, and the water has to run, and, and, and life has to go on. And your heart's not in it 100% necessarily, but, but it has to go on. And uh, that's the way we look at, at uh, our schedules. When, uh, it, it, it could have been that we uh, uh, didn't press on yesterday, but I don't know that that would have made it any better. I think a lot of people, for the most part, just soon stay busy. Uh, but but our our uh, procedures are to press on and um, in cases like this. So it's it's not because we don't have a heart or a soul. It's simply because that that we have a lot of responsibility. Everybody does in the garage areas to a lot of different people. And and the biggest thing is is that that that's what we do. We race, and that's what Kenny did. He races, and that's what Adam did. He races, and and that's what we do. And and it's it's a matter of. Uh, I think in, in some people's mind, it's it's uh, what's necessary is to press on. Mike Hilton addressing all of this weekend's activities for NASCAR, the sanctioning body. When we come back, more driver reaction and Steve Burns' visit with Darrell Waltrip. We are back at New Hampshire International Speedway here in Loudoun. The NASCAR Winston Cup teams going racing here on TNN in just a short while. You know, over the years, Darrell Waltrip has kind of become a spokesperson for the drivers on the NASCAR Winston Cup scene. Whether there's a rule that needs clarification or some heartfelt tragedy that needs explaining, Darrell is the man we turn to. I think probably the, the fan, uh, the guy at home, watching this on TV or that heard about what happened here with, with uh, Kenny. Um, I'm sure he's sitting there saying, how can those guys, how can they go back out there and, and uh, act like nothing happened? Uh, how do they do that? And 
trust me, in this garage area, Friday, uh, people were walking around looking at each other like, how can we do this? How can we keep going? Uh, you know, Kenny was a, was a great kid. And we all loved him. And, uh, you know, I, I, felt, I felt really awkward getting in my car and going out on the track because a kid had just lost his life in that corner over there. I, I had to drive down that straightaway right into that same corner. Man, I'm, I'm checking my throttle, I'm checking my brakes, I'm checking my brain. What am I doing here? We have to learn from this. Let's don't sweep it under the rug and forget about it. Let's learn from it. Let's move forward. I'm not pointing a finger at anybody. Let's look at the racetrack. You know, that's two, two times right in the same spot. Let's look at the racetrack. Let's be objective about it. Let's don't just let it go and say, oh, it's one of those things. Let's make some, let's, let's do something with it. Let's show that out of respect for Adam Petty and Kenny Irwin that we're gonna make some changes. We're gonna look at this a little differently and we're gonna try to prevent it from happening again. From, a, from an old guy that's been in a sport for 30 years, that would give me some comfort. We're taking this thing and we're not just avoiding it. We're not just hoping it'll go away, but we're saying, okay, we had a problem there and we fixed it. That's, that's, that would give me a lot more confidence in the track and NASCAR and everybody involved. It'd give me a lot more respect for everybody involved if it was handled just like an airplane crash. Take the car, a panel of experts puts it back together. Here's what happened. The throttle hung in the floor mat or the hot throttle hung in the firewall or the throttle hung under the air cleaner. But something happened and the throttle hung. There's plenty of people who saw it. So don't tell me, you know, well, we don't know what happened. Darrell Waltrip. We thank him for his time as he sat with Steve Burns earlier this morning here at the New Hampshire International Speedway. When we come back, Dick Bergren with a tour through a somewhat subdued garage area. Welcome back to New Hampshire, everybody. As is part of our normal pre-race shows, Dick Bergren was here at the crack of dawn in the garage area for his report on the Dawn Patrol. With thoughts of Kenny Irwin on their minds, the crews are coping as best they can by doing what they do best, working on the cars. Today, keep your eye on this one, number 55, Kenny Wallace. He was quickest in happy hour yesterday afternoon, scored his career best finish ever here in New Hampshire, a second place in this race last year. He'll be quick today. Jeff Burton should be considered a favorite to win the race today. He has won this event three years in a row. But we have a new tire this time, and Burton's not been happy with the setup as it works with the new tire. So this morning, throwing a different setup underneath this race car. Will it work? We'll see. The Speedway's tight turns and long straightaways pose a unique challenge to the mechanics. The solution? Put a rev limiter in the ignition system. That gives the engine plenty of power to come off the corners, but not so many RPM that it's likely to blow up at the end of the straightaway. Those rev limiters would stop it at about 9,000 RPM. Those are the speed secret for this Speedway for today's race. All right, Doctor, thank you very much. Hey, folks, a quick reminder, you can ride along live today with your favorite drivers by going online at TNNRacing.com. You can experience today's entire 300-lap race from multiple in-car views, and you can listen in to the radio scanner talk. That is TNNRacing.com, your exclusive and free online garage pass to the thatlook.com 300. New Hampshire International Speedway pays its respects to Kenny Irwin when we come back. Now as we rejoin you from New Hampshire International Speedway, let's go trackside and join the activities. The public address announcer here in New Hampshire is Al Robinson. Ladies and gentlemen, Please, once again, direct your attention to the presentation stage. Please stand for today's invocation and national anthem. And we would ask gentlemen to please remove your hats. Our invocation today will be delivered by Bishop Michael Cody, Auxiliary Bishop of Portland, Maine. Let us observe a moment of silence for Kenny Irwin.
Let us pray. Father in heaven, out of your infinite love, you have called us into being and sustain us daily. For this gift of life, which you have so generously bestowed upon us, we praise your holy name. Father, today we are especially mindful of Adam Petty and Kenny Irwin. Bless their families. Lord, may their loved ones be strengthened by the knowledge that both Adam and Kenny live with you in peace and eternal happiness. Father, look kindly upon your people who have gathered here for this NASCAR Winston Cup race. May they enjoy their stay and later travel in safety. Father, be present in a special way to the drivers in today's race. Give them your protection. Sharpen their skills. Keep them alert. Help them to use their abilities with foresight. May fair play rule the day, and in the end, may the best driver among them emerge victorious. Bless their families, Lord. Keep them always close to you and to one another. Finally, we thank you for the beauty of this day, for the good weather which we enjoy, and which is one more sign of your care for us. We ask all of this in the name of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ the Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to our all-service color guard at the start-finish line as we prepare for the singing of the national anthems of Canada and the USA by Denise Doucette.
Thank you, Denise, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please direct your attention to the skies above Turn 1 in New Hampshire International Speedway. The KC-135 is from the New Hampshire Air National Guard and is flanked by two F-16s from the Vermont Air National Guard. As soon as we come back to New Hampshire International Speedway, the ThatLook.com 300 racing from New Hampshire is next on TNN Sports. everybody from New Hampshire International Speedway I'm Eli Gold for the second time in two months we greet you from New Hampshire with heavy hearts in May we were shocked by the death of 19 year old Adam Petty and today we mourn the passing of 30 year old Kenny Irwin as no doubt you know by now Kenny was fatally injured here on Friday while practicing for today's race you know, as was the case two months ago with Adam, you search and you search for any understanding of why a vibrant 30-year-old has been taken from our midst. And as was the case with Adam two months ago, I at least can come up with no good answer to help ease the pain and fill the void that I know we are all experiencing together here today. As a NASCAR Winston Cup star, Kenny Ehrman was just beginning to show his ability. The 1998 NASCAR Winston Cup Rookie of the Year had only made 87 career starts. He was just now beginning to post some of those statistics that we all knew he was so capable of. As a USAC sprint car, silver crown, and midget champion, and then as a graduate of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, Kenny's previous racing accomplishments had truly become legendary. Seeing Kenny Irwin in victory lane was commonplace. Unfortunately, that's a sight now that will have to live on only in our memories. Needless to say, all of us here at TNN Sports, New Hampshire International Speedway, the entire NASCAR family extend our heartfelt condolences to the Irwin family and to each and every one of you whose lives were in any way touched by Kenny Irwin. Kenny dead at the age of 30. Dick Berggren is alongside. You know, this is a magnificent sport, but occasionally it's punctuated by a downright terrible weekend like we're having to endure here in New Hampshire. Indeed, Eli. We all feel for Kenny's friends, his family, and his fans. They grieve today along with his crew. This is a family-owned and operated racetrack. The Bear family, Bob, Gary, Sandy, care deeply about their drivers, and they are terribly saddened, as are we. Today's race is tough on everyone who came to know Kenny Irwin, but with respect, the show will go on. Buddy Baker, as per usual, on our telecasts as well, a Hall of Fame racer, and Buddy, regretfully, over the years, you've experienced this, losing good friends on the racetrack. He lied far too many times, and you know, when you start thinking about Kenny Irwin accident, it is a tragedy, but it also makes everybody aware of the problems that they have with the cars, with the racetrack, and everybody's focused, and they're trying to find out ways to make sure this does not happen anymore. And hopefully, they'll make the racetracks a little safer, race cars a little safer, so we don't have to have these kind of shows anymore. Everybody here is thinking about Kenny Irwin. Now let's go trackside. Glenn Jarrett, our senior pit reporter, joining us on the telecast this afternoon. Well, thanks a lot, Eli. And it is indeed a somber mood down here. But during that, I'm trying to focus on the good things that I remember about Kenny Irwin. And that started when he first broke into the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Right away, he won a couple of races. And I thought, man, there's a kid with a lot of talent, a lot of promise. But then later on that same year in 1997, Robert Yates helped to put him in a David Blair Motorsports Ford for the Winston Cup race at Richmond in the fall. He not only qualified second in his first ever race, he went on to finish eighth. The truly remarkable feat for a guy in his first ever Winston Cup race. It was evident to me, Kenny Irwin was a charger. His heart was in the right place, there's no doubt about that. 
and now his soul is in a better place. And all we have left are memories of a really fine young man. This morning in church services, his former car owner, Robert Yates, summed it up best in a very emotional eulogy. Here are Robert's words. If we prepare for life by living with faith in God, then we will be prepared for death when it comes. Glenn, I had the privilege of interviewing Kenny Irwin in Homestead, Florida, when he won his very first truck series race, and I'll never forget the look of joy and exuberance on his face as he climbed out of that number 98 truck. He got to the Winston Cup Series and got in the 28 car. People expected a lot of Kenny Irwin, and he never failed to answer a tough question, never dodged a single reporter. He was always a pleasure to be around. Now, again, Kenny Irwin will be missed, and he was a man a young man with a lot of courage. You know, to try to find the words to describe the feelings of the loss of emotions that everybody is suffering through here this weekend is virtually impossible. What's even tougher is to try to find the words to console each other, to find the comfort in what seems like a senseless situation. But in talking to the drivers here today, the toughest part for them now is going to be trying to find the courage that they need to summon up to drive for 300 laps here. Racing on a good day is a very tough sport. Today, Eli, racing is a brutal sport. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Now trackside, our Grand Marshal, great broadcaster, Ken Squire. In the memory of their fallen comrades, Adam Petty and Kenny Irwin. Gentlemen, start your engines and Godspeed. Welcome back, everybody, to New Hampshire International Speedway. Some high clouds, a nice little breeze, as you see. Temperature in the high 70s. Uh, we are getting set to go racing for the ThatLook.com 300. Let's take a look at the starting grid, sponsored by Big Kmart, where NASCAR fans race for savings. Rusty Wallace on the bud pole, seventh time this year. John Andretti, second front row start of the season. Mark Martin, six top fives here at New Hampshire. Jeff Burton won three in a row here in July, wants to extend it. Ricky Craven, two NASCAR Winston Cup poles here. And Tony Stewart, who led 118 laps in July of a season ago. Kenny Schrader always qualifies well here at New Hampshire. You think this might be the day, Dick Bergman, when Schrader can get to victory lane? Well, he sure needs a win, no doubt about that. It's been a long run, not since 91. Rick Mast won a NASCAR Bush Series race here, and Ward Burton. Brett Bodine, his best start of the year 2000, going in 13th spot, and Ricky Rudd, the 1994 winner. Bill Elliott was fifth in this race last year. Jeremy Mayfield, two wins this season. Jeffrey Bodine and Jimmy Spencer, another guy, buddy, Jimmy Spencer, who used to drive for you, who's had good runs here at New Hampshire. And he runs very well on a slick surface, which uh, this racetrack is very narrow as far as the groove uh, that you'll hear us talking about, the preferred groove. That's right around the bottom of the racetrack, right on the yellow line. He's good where the car slips. 
Daryl Waltrip and Kevin LePage going 27th and 28th second round qualifiers. Dave Blaney and Joe Nimichak, who won here last September. Mike Skinner, he was fifth here in 1998. Terry Labonte, he's banged up after the accident at Daytona, not feeling all that spiffy. Elliot Sadler and Chad Little are there. Scott Pruitt. There he is alongside Hamilton. Sterling Marlin, out of respect to Kenny Irwin, his teammate at Sapco Racing, did not qualify here on Friday. Sterling is in on a provisional starting spot. He just uh, stayed away from the racetrack for the rest of the day on Friday, as well you can understand. Wally Dowland back in Stacey Compton. Ed Barrier will go shotgun on the field. You also did see on that grid Steve Grissom, if you're not familiar. Steve, who was here yesterday for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series race, subbing for Kyle Petty. And Dave Marcus, the only driver who failed to qualify for today's running of the that look 300 if you're curious as to what that name means as you see the weather here that look is a uh, internet website that uh, well can help you if you say I want to look like that I want that look a little uh, augmentation here and there that look is a, a website that can uh, steer you in the right direction and that's who's sponsoring today's race as we go green here in New Hampshire. degree bank turn and yet another flat 1500 foot straight away and Trini with the quick move inside of Rusty Wallace to take over the lead Rusty looked back on the inside to head off turn two there Ricky Craven in the 50 car now fighting up and trying to take the spot away as they go down the back straight away trying to move into second and Craven who was the guest of honor at the governor's breakfast here the other day, Governor Gene Shaheen of New Hampshire, honoring the racers and Ricky Craven. And here goes Craven for the lead. Boy, you can tell his hometown here, Dick. He's really got his foot in the carburetor on that 50 car. Ricky Craven moving all the way up front. Well, this is also his best racetrack by far, and he's got a terrific race car to run here today. He told me yesterday, we truly have an opportunity to shock the world, and indeed he would. He has only made six starts this year. Three of them have ended up as DNFs, but here the media has been all over Ricky Craven. They believe, as he does, he's got a shot to win this thing. This is the first race that Ricky Craven has led since Martinsville in April of 1999. Eli, I think it's going around here. Everybody tells me the car to watch today is this number 20 car right there. They tell me Tony the Tiger's going to be the guy to beat. Well, he's got the best average finish of any driver here. He's only run two Winston Cup races, but his average finish in those two races, sixth. And he had a shot to win both of them. But how about the guy we were just riding with there, the XI Ford of Jeff Burton? As we mentioned, he has won the last three in a row in the month of July here in New Hampshire. 12, Jeremy Mayfield, 36, the yellow Ken Schrader car. Riding with Ricky Rudd, squirrely there, just a little bit off the corner, and it cost him. You see that? Yes, I did. Ward Burton just made the move, and there goes. He's losing position after position. Once you get out there, you don't get the drive down the straightaway. But here's what happened. Watch this. Oh, he gets a little nudge there from Ward Burton. Yeah, that's why he was squirrely off the corner. <laughs> and Ward gets the position. But that one down in the notebook is something that works. Field is settling down as we ride with Dale Jarrett now. He's in 14th position. He started 10th, so he has lost four spots here on the start. But Craven. Ricky Craven pulling away by one and two tenths of a second. He is way, way out there. He said this racetrack has come to his rescue in the past and is liable to do it again today. There's Tony Stewart making a move. Caution. Down. Turn four. 
We have problems for Terry Labonte. Oh. Boy, he did not need that. No, he did not. He's got a broken foot already and, and got a lot of problems. Look at Chad Little, the green car there. Heavy contact by both cars. So lap number six, Terry Labonte and Chad Little in turn number four. And you see Terry already limping after the incident at Daytona. He has the most DNFs, did not finish, of any driver here at New Hampshire. Terry has failed to finish four of the uh, ten events here at the New Hampshire International Speedway. Boy, this is the second time he's been on fire here as yeah. well. Uh, the September 97 race, he was on fire. September 99, he crashed twice in a single race. And this is a guy that never crashes. Terry yeah. Labonte almost always brings it home whole. Watch it again. Up oh, there they are together. Look like they're going for the same piece of real estate from that angle. Oh, oh man. man. Can't hit it much harder than that. And that's right at the part of the racetrack where both of them are trying to, as you said, get the same piece of real estate. Did not work out. We'll watch it again. It was a mean lick. And as you say, Terry Labonte didn't need that. He arrived here at the racetrack on crutches. Uh, the day after Daytona, he woke in the morning with his knee all swollen up. He went off to a doctor's office who x-rayed it and declared it broken. Right, He's it was driving a, with a broken leg. Yeah, the tibia. That's that uh, tibia, big yeah. bone be no, below the knee. He has bruised ribs. Jack Sprague from the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series was standing by in relief if needed. Uh, clearly, that's not going to be the case. And, of course, for Chad Little, things keep getting worse either uh, because, you know, Chad had announced at Daytona that uh, he and Jack uh, Roush would not be together next year. You see Chad is out of the car there. Looked like they had put a little bit of a uh, collar on him. Tough way to get things going here in New Hampshire. Caution early in the day. two retirees of the day, Chad Little and Terry Labonte going to the garage area. Folks, quick reminder again, you can start your web browsers and go to tnnracing.com and ride along with your favorite driver here at New Hampshire today. You'll be able to experience this entire event from multiple in-car views and listen in to Radio Scanner Talk. That's tnnracing.com, your exclusive and free online garage pass to the That Look dot com 300 watch again what happened Eli they're already making contact right there as they come out they turn right right into the wall you see both of them hard contact there when they hit you notice the fire coming out of the five car yeah what that is that can be brake lines that are sheared and also the fuel pump lines are sheared off and that's gas and uh, brake line fluid that catches on fire there everything's very hot underneath the cars and uh, it goes out pretty quickly there's Terry getting out. Again, remember, he had, already has that broken leg. And uh, that does not help matters one bit. So, short day. You know, Gary Dehart was telling us in the garage area this morning how good that car was. Yeah, he said it was real good in the center part of the corner. And that has been the argument that most of the guys have had with their cars. They wouldn't turn in the center part of the corner. And uh, they had that worked out. Too bad he had that wreck so early. Rick Mast with the hood up on the Conseco machine. He had a good starting spot. Mass started in the 11th position, and he has run very well in the past here at New Hampshire. They were looking for a good day. Remember last September? Led 13 laps here. Of course, Rick Mass, as we mentioned earlier, also one of those who had won here in the NASCAR Bush Series. But as we're under caution, it is local favorite, Ricky Craven, who's leading. <laughs> back under green by one lap here at New Hampshire International Speedway. Rusty Wallace now in second. Got a great jump bypassing John Andretti for second spot. Though Ricky Craven had the best restart of all to hang on to the lead as we now ride with the new look for John Andretti. Jeremy Mayfield on the move by Mark Martin as they head into turn three there. And he started 16th, Mayfield did, now all the way up to sixth spot. And this is one of his worst tracks. He has never led a lap here, never finished on the lead lap. Uh, Jeremy's got a lot to prove here today at the Hampshire Speedway. 
running in fifth as you ride with Mark Martin, who is now back to the sixth spot. Mark says he is good on big flat tracks, but not short flat tracks. As you see a good 14th place battle right there. Jeffrey Bodine in the 60 to the inside of Dale Earnhardt Jr. in that red number eight. Hey, Jeffrey was really fast in happy hour yesterday afternoon. Uh, second quickest of all the cars. And uh, this morning, Joe Bessie, his car owner, told me that he thought they really had a car good enough to win the race. Let's go to Glenn Jarrett. Well, guys, you see, you saw Bodine take that position from Earnhardt Jr. The reason was uh, Earnhardt Jr. went on the outside of Dale Jarrett to try to take the 14th from him. Earnhardt Jr. started in 26th spot. By the end of five laps, he had already moved up to 16th. Now he's still in 15th spot. Got a little damage on the left front where he got into somebody. But, man, he has got a rocket ship. That is the same car that he won at Richmond. One more thing I'll say before I throw it back upstairs. We commented about Rick Mass making a pit stop there under that caution. number 14 car tough break for Rick so a tough break right now in the early stages for Rick Mast there you see the spread from first and second back to third place where Tony Stewart now has the spot ahead of Mayfield and Andretti so Tony Stewart this track might well owe him one. What do you think? I think so. <laughs> if you uh, guys didn't see our broadcast last year, he had the race pretty well in hand. Ran out of fuel with just a few laps to go. But this car was on the rail all day long. And does that team ever have a great New England flair to it? Greg Zipidelli, the crew chief, is from New Britain, Connecticut. The engine specialist, Chris Woodward, is from right here in New Hampshire. Tony Stewart's team engineer, Dave Rogers, is from Marshfield, Vermont. Jason, uh, Jason Shapiro is from Essex, Connecticut. The tire carrier, Jay Barry, is from <laughs> Connecticut. You get the idea. I think maybe they're destined. To... There's Rudd in the 28th. The yellow 36 is Kenny Schrader. They're battling for 12. And you're talking about Tony Stewart. They build the car in Charlotte, North Carolina. Thank you very much. Got to throw that in. <laughs> yeah, that's in Southern Connecticut, isn't it? Buddy? talked about uh, Tony and his crew chief, Greg Zipidelli. Greg has been involved with, he said it was either six or seven, he wasn't sure, but six or seven race wins here in New Hampshire between the Bush North Series and the Featherlight Modified Tour. So, uh, in the for what it's worth department. Did you see DJ Hammer and yeah, Kenny Schrader? That? Schrader's just getting beaten up on the outside. That's not the first time he's been whacked. Well, Schrader's fighting really hard right now, and they make contact to Schrader very turn left and they were again. Oh, again well he wasn't getting off the wall there that was just contact period you expect to find out that Don King is promoting this one <laughs> the boxing promoter would have his hands full with these two guys live action in the upper left taped a lap ago on the lower right there's one bump yeah, that was kind of a hello, I'm here type bump. But over on the front straightaway, there's a lot more contact. Well, you just know DJ's not running into him just to run into him. DJ's in the hunt for a championship. and You don't mess around under those circumstances. Well, Dale Jarrett now falling back to a couple of spots there. Does not look like he's getting the forward bite he wants at this particular time. And don't worry about these guys dropping back a little bit because when they make their first pit stop, they'll make a lot of changes. The racetrack is totally different today. It's very cool out. We have a cloud cover over the racetrack. Yesterday, the sun was out. Let's go down to the infield care center. Steve Burns is with Terry Labonte. Terry, you came in here banged up. What happened, and are you okay? Not fine. I, I don't... The 97 was on the outside of me, and it looked like he broke loose or something and caught me in the right rear there. Kind of over from there. Terry was as low on that racetrack as you could possibly be. Yeah, and what he's talking about, that outside car just turned sideways and got into the right rear corner. When it did, it steered him up the racetrack and took both cars out. Jeffrey Bodine holding off Schrader's challenges. That battle you see is the 13th on back. Jeffrey Bodine in the 60, Schrader in the 36, Dale Jarrett the 88, Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the number eight. 
two just like running each other. I think they're back together again. He lies down in the turn three. He ought to be able to make this pass. But Schrader, he's fighting back as hard as you want to. Just behind him, Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the number eight car there. Look at how those guys are moving up. You saw that on the graphic. You got to be patient here. Well, here's no patience whatsoever in the number eight car. He'll no. go in there as hard as he can hold the car down on the bottom of the track. I don't think Schrader's big on patience right now either. It's been not only a long time since he's won, it's been a long time even since he has had a top five finish. Last top five for Schrader, September 1998. Here's a guy that's used to winning a whole bunch of races. He hasn't even won in a local short track this year, and he is absolutely frustrated. But Ralph, the way he's running right now, maybe today is Schrader's day. Well, Kenny's a fun-loving guy. He, as you can tell from the paint scheme on his car, if nothing else, and he just took his annual, what he dubbed this year, is the Millennium Madness Float 2000 trip right after Daytona. He gets a bunch of his friends together in St. Louis, and they float down the river. Well, fortunately for Kenny, after getting banged around like he is today, tomorrow, he's leaving on what he's calling the boys' trip. Kenny, the lawyer, the banker, and the tile contractor are taking off for St. Louis. From there, wherever the wind blows the party is the direction those four are headed. <laughs> of course, the Winston Cup teams are off next weekend while the NASCAR Bush Series and the Craftsman Trucks go to New uh -oh. uh, to Nazareth, Pennsylvania. Mike Skinner, Mike Skinner brings out the caution flag. Mike was running in 25th spot and caution for the second time, lap number 28. Speaking of frustrated drivers, look at the left front, not even turning on that race car. Tremendous amount of damage to that car. So Mike Skinner brings out the caution flag for the second time here today. And clearly, when you can read the words Goodyear Eagles, <laughs> because the tire is not going around and the wheel's not going around, you have yourself some problems. Eli, and that's the header pipes and the uh, sway bar mounts and everything dragging. That's really tearing that car up even more as he goes around here. And this has not really been a good track for Mike. He has finished 21st here. Then he did have a fifth place finish once, but then he finished 23rd here. And uh, that car, the same one they used at Martinsville and at Richmond, hasn't finished better than 19th this season, that car, and maybe not today. Boy, interesting strategy on pit road. Stewart and a bunch of others have come down. Usually it's follow the leader. This time, Ricky Craven and his crew chief were talking about whether to pit or not. Craven said, let's do what Rusty does. So they were watching in their rearview mirror. Rusty stayed out. They did, too. Let's go. John Andretti is in. They're going to take four tires on this car. Now, the big change for him is that his normal front tire changer, Brian Winter, is not here. His wife is having a baby. So Ricky Thomas has come over from the 44 to change front tires for him. Hopefully, they'll get a good stop. They do, and he's underway. Glenn? And we're down to Jeff Burton. He's brought the number 99 in for a four-tire change, one can of fuel. they got plenty of fuel in it now. He's pouring out the overflow. All the other cars are going by, and he is down and away. So early four-star, four-tire stop for Burton. He did not like the way the car was handled. Steve Grissom exiting. There's Stacy Compton in the nine going out. Scott Pruitt has been in. Again, all of these stops because of this incident involving Mike Skinner. You would have to think that he and Bobby Hamilton may have gotten together back up on the straightaway because both of them were slowed a lot, even though he was wrecking before he ever got to the corner part. Mike Skinner has gone to the garage. That man, Larry McReynolds, he has a race win and a pole here as a crew chief back in the days when Ernie Irvin was his driver. Now he's got a long day of work. Ahead of it. Hi, Jeff Burton for L.A. West Luxury Vehicles. First in quality and the only choice for the Burtons. L.A. West Luxury Vehicles, available nationwide from select Ford dealers. Call us at 1-800-786-VANS. Drivers, race teams, and race fans. The year 2000 Team Simpson Racing Catalog is now available. For more information, call 1-800-71-RACING or visit the Simpson website at simpsonraceproducts.com and join Team Simpson today. Welcome back, everybody. Under caution here at the New Hampshire International Speedway. Many teams have pitted. Eleven, however, chose not to make pit stops. Ricky Craven did not come in, nor did Rusty Wallace. Jeremy Mayfield didn't pit, nor did Ward Burton. 
Ricky Rudd stayed out. Jeffrey Bodine stayed out. So too Dale Jarrett. He did not make a pit stop. Others who didn't pit, Steve Park did not come in. We didn't see Mike Bliss on the pit lane, Darrell Waltrip, or Ed Berrier. So those 11 drivers chose to stay out. Everybody else pitted at lap number 29. Well, it'll be interesting to see what those two tire stops do for some of these teams. Yesterday in the truck race, this man, Bobby Hamilton, led about three quarters of the event without changing any tires on his truck. Of course, eventually he went out with a flat tire, but that was debris induced. And with those stale tires, Hamilton was able to not only maintain the lead, but he could keep anybody behind him that he chose to keep behind him. Uh, these tires are terrific. They don't give up. Hey, look, buddy, you were right, I think. You yep. were talking about he and Skinner probably getting together. Yeah, you see the tire mark right there on the corner of the right front. And when you touch there, that, that probably set it off there. Steve Burns has caught up with Mike Skinner. Steve? Hey, Eli, Mike Skinner is helping the guys work on this car. Mike, what happened? Can you get back out? I don't know. Uh, they're going to try to. This is off a good race team. If uh, anybody can put this thing together enough to just go out and get some Winston Cup points, these guys can. Uh, you know, I, I'm sure it was an accident. I think the four car might have got loose or something. I, I don't really know what happened. I just know I got tagged. And, uh, you know, I know Bobby wouldn't wreck us on purpose. So it was just one of those racing deals. Sad deal for the low Chevrolet today. Uh, had a little better car than we thought we did. And we... Uh, qualified bad i was going for it and i slipped a little bit qualifying but uh, the car was moving up through the field and i think we're going to have a pretty decent day but uh we'll get out and try to get some valuable winston cup points and a little bit of recognition for lowe's and sylvania and chevrolet and everybody else thanks mike mike skinner a drop snout car he said for him, he wanted a drop snout car here. Easier to drive on the flat track. He likes the balance. What is a drop snout car? Just what you said. The snout is dropped. And <laughs> <laughs> no, what it is, the right front, it changes the roll center on the car. It makes it get more bite on the front part of the car. It's a change of the uh, pediment up front. Hey, folks, coming up next weekend here on TNN, the greatest show on dirt travels to Eldora, Ohio, for one of the biggest weekends in sprint car racing. Check out the Pennzoil World of Outlaws battling the Eldora Clash on Friday night. Then Saturday night, it's the prestigious Kings Royal. Both races start at 9 o'clock Eastern and Pacific. That is next weekend right here on TNN. Getting set to go back to green, right, wrapping up our second point. caution. Ready. Ready. Green, 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 green. That red number 50, Ricky Craven, for the fifth time in his career, leading a race in the NASCAR Winston Cup Series here in New Hampshire. The NASCAR timing and scoring rundown in the upper left-hand corner of your screen, brought to you by NapaOnline.com, where everything great about Napa is now available online. Boy, I'm watching Jeremy Mayfield up at the front as we look back at the cars going by. Jeremy Mayfield has caught Rusty Wallace now, and he's all over the back of that car. We better not spin it out because those are team cars. It's going to be nice to Rusty. Hey, credit where credit is due. That 50 car of Ricky Craven, that is one of the more underfunded cars. They don't have yeah. a, a big sponsor. In fact, the sponsor is the folks who own the race car team. And to do what they, oh, here comes Mayfield. And to do what they're doing today, to lead all these laps, is pretty spectacular. That's a tiny little team. If you want to cheer for an underdog, there's an underdog in the lead right now. And so far, that uh, underdog, Ricky Craven, has led more laps today than he has led in any race since October of 97 in Rockingham when he led 139 laps and finished third. There goes 12th place. And they're further back. Well, no, I thought Stewart would get around the 25 of Nadeau. He did. He, did. he will. It yeah. was a matter of time there. When Tony Stewart in the 20 car has fresh tires on, let me tell you, he's a killer. And it only gets better as he starts to, everybody else starts wearing their tires down and using up their fuel. They lose grip. That 20 car stays pretty much the same. A lot of grip on the racetrack here this weekend. As you see the swap around at fourth place, Jeffrey Bodine grabbing the spot from the 22 with whom we are riding now. That is Ward Burton. Jeffrey's another local hero, did most of his racing that put him to Winston Cup. 
right in this neck of the woods. Won races in New Hampshire and Maine and Connecticut. He was a big star in New England. And of course, his native upstate New York. Not the most liked driver when he ran modifieds in this area. In fact, they, they disliked him enough one night at uh, Seacock. Some of his competitors tried to turn the truck over to express their displeasure. They never liked the, <laughs> they never liked the guy who wins all the time. Well, that was the problem. He won too much, and, and he wasn't the most social person at the time either because his head was always in that race car. 43 and Andretti inside of Dale Earnhardt. Scrambling for 19th as you watch it from the view Robert Presley has. Bernard goes in the corner real, real hard, but Andretti just motors right on by him. Now he's got to work with Robert Presley just behind him. Somebody is doing very well. Brett Bodine in the 11 car. It looks like what, since he's got the new crew chief, really has turned around for Brett Bodine. Joining us, Terry Labonte and Chad Little, involved in an accident on lap six, sending both men to the garage. Mike Skinner into the wall and turn one, lap 28, D2 is in the garage. Well, that's an interesting shot. And you know, you look for the banking. They say there is 12 degrees of banking in the turn. Yeah, where's the banking? I guess technically it's there right up against the lip of the wall. Yeah, I think if you put all your marbles together at the top of the turn, you can keep all your marbles together at the top of the turn here. <laughs> Not for those of us who haven't already lost their marbles. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Let's see what Joe Nimichek is able to do. A winner here last year. Doc, let's do this the easy way. Let's go, I'll do miles an hour and do RPM. Coming off the corner there, 127, 139, 45, 50, 58. And he got right to 9,000 RPM. And that's probably where the rev limiter cut in. It's interesting, you stand in the turns here at New Hampshire and you listen to those rev limiters and you hear the motors go pop, 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 pop. What they do is when the engine gets to a certain RPM, you can put a computer chip in there that tells you what RPM, the engine just won't turn any higher than that. About 158 miles an hour, though, going down towards the corner. That's really swift. On basically a quarter mile straightaway. Exactly. Meanwhile, up front, Ricky Craven continuing to show the way. Still early, but he enjoys the view from a lead of six tenths of a second. Winnebago Industries, the official motor home of TNN Sports. For information on Winnebago Industries products or the Winnebago Motorsports team, call 1-800-643-4892. Chase Authentics is the authentic trackside apparel of NASCAR. Authentic racing apparel you'll find on hot drivers. Chase Authentics. Communications provided by Racing Radio, the leader in racing communications worldwide. Call us today at 1-800-669-1522 for all your two-way needs for race teams and scanners and headsets for the fans. And at the track, see Track Scan on Vendor's Row for all your on-site scanning needs. Welcome back, Eli Gold, Buddy Baker, Dick Bergren, Glenn Jarrett, Steve Burns, Ralph Shaheen. We're all with you here at New Hampshire International Speedway. 48 laps complete. Ricky Craven continuing to lead. You watch Rick Mast in the number 14. He is back down in 37th spot. Had made that extended pit stop that we had talked about back on lap number 11. Meanwhile, Steve Burns has a story on the pit lane. Eli, we're back in the garage area. Just wanted to update Chad Little, who was involved in that accident with Terry Labonte on lap six. He has been transported to a local hospital here in Concord, New Hampshire. However, it's just for precautionary measures. They took off the neck brace that you uh, alluded to earlier. He feels okay. They're just going to do some precautionary measures. Also, their crew chief, Jeff Hammond, is not here this weekend. His father is seriously ill back in North Carolina. It's a Ralph Shaheen. Well, we have found the problem for Rick Mast. It was this right here, spark plug. AJ Point, as far over, took a look at it and said, looks like it just wasn't firing. So it took them four pit stops to get it changed. He is back out on the racetrack and is starting to make his way up to the field a little bit. Eli. Well, you certainly hope so because after a while, AJ just 
bite through that race car. It's been a, been a, a, a trying year for the Conseco team. Oh, boy, they really have had a rough year. And you they've look. got good people. Yeah, too. they That's do. The they do. But listen to these statistics on that team. Seven DMQs, two DNFs, best finished 20th with three drivers, two crew chiefs, and two team managers. How much frustration yeah. can anyone take? And if you're new to the sport, DNQ means they did not qualify for the race. DNF means they made the race but did not finish. Yep. But you know what? You stick with it, and you can have a day like Ricky Craven is having, and he stuck with it. Would have been so easy for Ricky to have turned his back on this sport when things weren't going well, but he just hung in there, hung tough, and he's still leading. He had that post-concussion syndrome, you might remember. And, and buddy, unfortunately, but you can comment. You, you've had injuries of a similar ilk. It can really take, let alone your career away, it can take your confidence away if you're even lucky enough to come back. Absolutely, and the first thing he did that when he really got where he understood what was going on around him again, he called me and said, I need to talk to you. He, he realized that I'd been through that same thing, and he said, how did you fight back from it? And we talked for quite a bit on the airplane. And uh, I tell you, I said, are you 100% sure you're well? And he said, I'm not sure. And I said, then you're not well, because you know it's just like you might turn the switch on. All of a sudden, you're normal again, and you know it. Well, Ricky has led all but two laps here today. We've run 53, as you see, he's led 51 of them. Our pole sitter, Rusty Wallace, led the first lap, and John Andretti led lap number two. Eli, the, the cars right now have been on these tires long enough that the balance is beginning to show up. Rusty Wallace's car now looks very, very strong as he's closing in on Ricky Craven. Craven's car is beginning to kick out just a little bit right there. And Rusty Wallace's car right now has momentum coming up out of the corner. I look for these guys to get into a pretty good tussle here pretty quick. I think it's interesting to note, though, that of the fellows who pitted on lap 29, they have not been able to progress to the front past about eighth place. That's where Tony Stewart is situating right now, situated right now. There you see third place, but uh, those two tires have not been a big story. And that's the, well, it's going to be a big story by the end of today because yeah. what it has proven is that used tires are almost as good as brand new, and Stewart's the only guy in the top ten that changed tires. Everybody else is still back there proving the importance of track position in comparison to fresh rubber this afternoon. Now, Jeremy Mayfield a while ago was on Marks towards the front. You see him losing position right there to Ward Burton. Here comes Dale Jarrett looking on the inside. And when I say the balance goes off, that means the front wheels are losing traction or the rear wheels or the whole car is beginning to slide out. 56 laps in. Still, Ricky Craven is the race leader while you watch this battle. Back for fifth spot. And Glenn is still hanging around a couple three car lanes for Craven. Yeah, Eli, he's been able to hold on pretty well. This is his crew chief, Greg Connor. Greg, looks like he's starting to lose a little bit of grip, but you've run about 55 laps. What's Ricky saying about the car? Right now, he says the car is pretty good. He really likes the Midwest Transit Chevy. We started the air a little bit different so we could get a really good start. Uh, I think Rusty was a lot lower than we were. So right now, he's as quick as we are. Whoever's in front is going to have an advantage. If Rusty gets by, it'll be tough from there. Greg, how long before you have to pit? between 80 and 90 uh yeah we're not really sure we made some changes but probably around 85 we made short pit to try and put a little pressure on some people that didn't stop okay guys that means he's got about 30 more laps he's hoping for a caution and he's also hoping it ain't him and i tell you something else jeffrey bodine in the 60 is by far the quickest car out there i've watched him run the two leaders down He's got that thing dialed in very well, and he is a master of setting the car up himself. So working with his crew and all, look for Jeffrey Bodine to be an answer here maybe today. His last lap of 127 miles an hour was quickest of everybody on the speedway. The fans are here, a comfortable day in New England. Hope you're enjoying wherever you're tuning in. Shortly after the top of the hour, we went green here at New Hampshire International Speedway. Ricky Craven took the lead on lap three, but the race was slowed at lap six.
Terry Labonte and Chad Little found the same piece of real estate and then the same piece of wall. Caution two came at lap 28. Mike Skinner spun off into the number one corner, sending him to the garage, and you are up to speed, except we've got a battle for the lead as Jeffrey Bodine and Rusty Wallace and, and Ward Burton will all go around to the inside of Ricky Craven. Can we add another one? Dale Jarrett dives to the bottom. He loses four spots in one half a straightaway. So Jeffrey Bodine, the first race he has led in, in his seventh start since coming back at Richmond International Raceway after that horrendous accident down at Daytona during speed weeks of this year. And this is the third time that Jeffrey Bodine has led here at New Hampshire International Speedway. And when he has run and led here, it has not been decisive because combined in those three efforts, he had only led a total of 22 laps at this place. Eli, in one lap, Ricky Craven went from first to seventh spot. That's how tight these guys are running right now as Tony Stewart is making a move towards the front in the 20 car also right behind the leader here, Jeffrey Bodine. And Jeffrey Bodine needs a good run as well. Uh, this morning I talked to Joe Bessie, the team owner, and he said there is a definite schism in this team, no question about it. Uh, they are absolutely on the edge. Power team is gone at the end of this year. They have got to have some good finishes should they be able to attract the sponsor for next year. Bessie said today could be a real big day for this team, indeed. Hey, Ralph, who would have thought after that Friday afternoon in Daytona back in February we'd be talking about that guy leading a race? Eli, it was one of the most horrific incidents any of us had ever seen in that racetrack. Unfortunately, Jeffrey Bodine lived through it to race another day. Jim Watkins is crew chief. Jim, what does this mean to this team to have this kind of a run here today? I tell you, we really need this. This is a, it's a good car. A car we had at Richmond. And uh, these guys need this. with this race today. I mean, there are so many drivers who are really running well. And of course, there are others who aren't. We'll update you here shortly on Dale Earnhardt Jr. We're watching Jeffrey Bodine, but I will tell you that Earnhardt Jr. has backslid all the way to 29th spot. So we'll check on that situation for you and bring you up to speed as well. There is fourth place, Jared in the 88, Tony grabbing the spot. Now that's what you call points racing. Dale Jarrett just backed out, let Tony Stewart go right on by. He realized he ran him down from a long ways back. He just moved over. Now Ricky Red's making a move on Dale Jarrett. He'll do the same thing. He's out the throttle, let him go. He'll make adjustments on the next pit stop and be ready to go. Riding with Ricky Rudd. You know, Jarrett has not pitted yet. And normally here, I was going back on some of the notes of the previous 10 races here. Everybody seems to make fairly significant chassis adjustments on their first pit stop here. This place has always been tough early in an event. But you know, even in the garage this morning, Eli, there were very few people that were throwing a lot of different chassis adjustments into the race cars. It seems as if whatever people unloaded with is pretty much what they're running. The racetrack as such seems to have settled down a little bit. Well, we've got cloud cover. That Temperatures helps. are fairly comfortable. You're right, Eli. And Jeffrey Bodine, apparently, is a great guesser because he has now lessened his lead to about four seconds. And over the man we're riding with right now, Jarrett, the lead is nearly six seconds. Robin Cumberton, Rusty Wallace's crew chief, says, don't worry, guys, it's still early. TNN Sports live coverage of the ThatLook.com 300 is being brought to you by NapaOnline.com, where everything great about Napa is now available online. And by Team Monte Carlo, the cars more champions depend on. Chevy will be there. Welcome back. Your race leader, Jeffrey Bodine. He now leads Tony Stewart, who going in a turn three seconds ago, shot to the inside of Rusty Wallace and grabbed second spot. And again, only Tony Stewart of those who took on tires during that pit stop in lap 29 has been able to make his way 
to the front. Meanwhile, we had mentioned Dale Earnhardt Jr. a short while ago. There he is. He's got a little cosmetic damage to the left front of the automobile. And the reason why was because of some uh, battles on the racetrack. Watch this. <laughs> wow. Pardon me. Coming through. Scrub, scrub. Wally Dolan back. Now, Steve, Steve, after that last caution, Earnhardt Jr. restarted at 28th, but he's not been able to improve at all. What's the deal? Eli, I just spoke with Tony Urey Jr. on Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s race team, and he said the car is extremely tight. Keep in mind, when this race started, it was extremely sunny, very bright, and now we're under cloud cover. We've heard several teams complaining about being tight with the clouds. There you see the battle that's ongoing there, middle of the field. Eight is Dale Earnhardt Jr. Ahead of him is Bobby Hamilton. Right behind him is Steve Grissom, who was subbing for Kyle Petty here this weekend at New Hampshire International Speedway. Oh, see, oh, oh big wiggle junior. by Jr. Now, that was not tight. That was loose right there where the back end jumped out. But what Steve Burns was talking about is when you have a car that's extremely tight like that, it means it's getting a tremendous amount of forward bite in the middle part of the corner. Real wheels pushing the front out. We're going to start seeing some pit stops pretty soon. Daryl Waltrip has just pitted. Jeffrey Bodine's radio has just told him four more laps. We want to see you in. We're at lap number 81. The car is just not getting any kind of a... No, I think sense. he's got a little problem all over the way there. Uh, the eight car there is losing grip all the way around the racetrack. Get folks, TNNRacing.com is online and ready to welcome you onto the World Wide Web. You can ride along with your favorite drivers, experience everything that's going on from the in-car views, and you can listen into the radio scanners that everybody monitors here at the racetrack. TNNRacing.com, it's your exclusive and absolutely free online garage pass to the that look. Dot com 300. All right, now on turn four, Ricky Craven is making his pit stop. So Ricky Craven comes in as you watch Dale Earnhardt Jr. There's Craven. He will stop at lap number 83. Again, this is scheduled. He did not come in when many of the leaders pitted at lap 29. The 11 drivers who did not pit at lap 29, Glenn, will be coming in now momentarily. Yeah, oh, the tire rolled away, but the guy caught it. Now he's coming back, and it gets away from the guy along the wall. They did make a significant chassis adjustment. It will be a four-tire change. Uh, the car had gotten very, very ill uh, running on those old tires. He is down and away about 19.9 seconds. Uh, that's a little slow by the day standards, but for this crew, just being together for the first time, running up front, not a bad stop at all in the green. Now, as you heard Dick Bergren say, if they stick to their plan, Jeffrey Bodine will be in either next time or the lap thereafter. We're riding with Boyd Burton, who is making his pit stop now at lap number 85. And Glenn, you've got an eyeball on him. This will be a four-tire change as well for Ward Burton. His car had also really lost the handle. I tell you guys, after about, looks like about 60 laps, the handle really goes away on these cars. Everybody was crying for tires and wanting some adjustment made. They're on the left side of Ward's car now. He is down and away. Here's Ralph Shaheen. Second gear at 4,500. That's what they're telling Jeffrey Bodine. Carl Moore will go to work on the front tires. On the rear tires will be Lance Curto. Everything obviously very good. With the handling of this race car, not making any major changes to the car, just making sure they get new and tires and a good, solid stop. Of course, with a green flag pit stop, you don't want to lose too much track position, so a solid stop is what you need. And a little trouble with the left oh, rear, oh, oh, oh. and he is away in 17-9, but a little trouble with the left rear. The pit stop has handed the lead to that driver, Tony Stewart. He comes in on lap 29, took his two tires, so he stays out now as Jeremy Mayfield is in at lap number 87. Again, all of these drivers, these 11 who are making stops now, did not pick back at lap number 29. 
Rusty Wallace is due in. He repeals off the racetrack now. And Rusty Wallace will come in to make his pit stop again. These are scheduled, and they are coming under the green. Glenn? Yeah, Robin Pemberton and the whole crew are waiting on Rusty. They're going to make a slight uh, air pressure adjustment on the car. Rusty's car has been pretty good. He's been good from the get-go, as he always is on this flat racetrack. Wow, were they ever quick on the right side. I'm telling you, Billy Wilburn on that uh, the front tires there is about as good as anybody I have ever seen. Rusty is down and away in about 15.9 seconds. Great stop under the green. Dale Jarrett comes in now. As you see him grinding to a halt. Also in for service is Mike Bliss. He is about five pit stalls behind Jarrett. Only folks who have not yet pitted are Steve Park. Wow. And also having not pitted, Ricky Rudd and Ed Barrier. What a stop by Jarrett, 15.7. Well, it's the old Rainbow Warriors, and they click them off every time. Here comes Steve Park. We had told you he had not yet stopped. He is in now. Lap number 90 is when his stop is taking place, almost one-third of the way in. Let's see if everything is routine for the Pennzoil team. Ricky Rudd is stopping while we watch Steve Park. Rudd peels off the racetrack. He was running in second spot when he peeled off the racetrack there to make his stop. So we have cycled back around as Ricky Rudd is in, Ralph. Now Norma Kashimizu getting the gas into the car. They go with the second cam now. No chassis adjustments to the 28 of Ricky Rudd as well. They clean the grill off and he is away. A 16-1, a very solid stop, but he lost his drink bottle. He had made it, he had pulled a drink bottle in and slid out the passenger side. As now everybody has come in for service. Tony Stewart is the race leader. Bobby Labonte is second. Then Jeff Gordon, Mark Martin, and Jerry Nadeau. Welcome back, everybody. Tony Stewart is the race leader in the number 20 machine. We have just wrapped up green flag pit stops for the drivers who did not pit at lap number 29. Stewart now has a lead of eight seconds over the number two man on the racetrack. That is Bobby Labonte. There is the interstate batteries machine. He also came in for tires back on lap number 29. So it's an eight second lead, technically 7.3 seconds right now as we ride with Bobby Labonte and the interstate batteries circuit city onboard camera. from Bobby Labonte, you've got to go about three seconds further back, and we have caution, caution on the speedway, Jimmy Spencer. Jimmy Spencer, lap number 99. Caution for the third time as Jimmy Spencer brings out the yellow. Eli put the uh, window net down to let the corner workers know he's okay. No sooner had all the pit stops been completed than Jimmy came out. One thing we will tell you is while you were gone, Bill Elliott came in for service on lap 94. Bill made an unscheduled stop, taking on four tires under the green. So if you're a Bill Elliott fan, he is now running back a lap down in 38th position. Bill had pitted at lap 29 and came back at lap 94 for four tires. Tough break for Spencer, too. Remember, Jimmy was ninth here last July. Had a good race here at New Hampshire one year ago. So we are under caution. Track cleanup taking place right now. As Spencer is in the wall between turns one and two here in New Hampshire.
next Sunday here on TNN, the ASA drivers make their first visit to Chicago Motor Speedway. Should be quite a challenge for these teams that have never seen that racetrack. It's a new one-mile track, kind of shaped like a paper clip. Long straights, tight turns. Don't miss the USAMeets.com 200. That is next Sunday at 3 o'clock Eastern and Pacific right here on TNN. There you see Jeffrey Bodine. He has just stopped on the racetrack for one lap. The reason was for this little incident, and we'll explain it for you. Here he was trying to come to the stripe to what he thought would be a chance to get his lap back from race leader Tony Stewart. And it looks to you and I like Jeffrey Bodine beat him to the stripe. And he did, except when the caution came out for Spencer, Jeffrey Bodine had already taken the yellow a mile earlier. He was just coming to the start-finish line the lap prior when the caution came out. So he had already taken the caution, as did Michael Waltrip. So NASCAR is not penalizing Jeffrey. When they made him stop for a lap, they were just getting the lap back that he had gotten on the field. So Jeffrey Bodine is uh, fine. He is still a lap down, though, in 26 spot. Meanwhile, Jimmy Spencer, he took a pretty mean lick into the wall, and here's what it looked like when he got out of the race car. Yeah, you can see him favoring the left leg there, and what happens a lot of times, you'll have that on, your left leg on the brake pedal when you hit the wall, and it'll dislocate it when you hit. And they had to help Jimmy to the ambulance for the ride to the infield care center. There you see Dale Earnhardt Jr. After his pit stop, and there's Michael Waltrip. He now has stopped for the mile while the field comes back. And Michael, just like Jeffrey Bodine, had already taken the caution flag once before coming back around to try and get a lap back. And Glenn, I guess neither Michael nor Jeffrey in the, in the heat of the day realized that they had already taken the yellow once. Well, I'm betting the other way. I bet they didn't thought they could get by with it. <laughs> and that's exactly what I would have tried to do, too. However, let's, let's, let's put things the way they are now. With Michael Waltrip, Jeffrey Bodine, and these cars here, uh, Ricky Rudd, Dale Jarrett, Ward Burton, Steve Park, Bill Elliott, all those cars are lined up in front of Tony Stewart right now. They're all the guys that pitted off sequence. So they are actually at the tail end of the lead lap. They will restart the race in front of Tony Stewart. They were on pins and needles out there hoping that, that the pit stop for Tony and all the rest of the field cycled around before the caution came out, but it did not. So they're out in front of Stewart now, but they are on the very tail end of the lead lap. Uh, there were three other cars that were in that position too. Rusty Wallace, Ricky Craven, and Jeremy Mayfield. However, those three cars stopped during this uh, caution period for right side tires, so they're at the tail end of the lap solidly in the lap down. Boy, things are mixed up right now. So we get a one-to-go signal now as Dale Earnhardt Jr. is back in again at lap number 106. There's Michael Waltrip who kind of got going again too quickly. Now we really get screwed. Well, you heard the comment from the racing team. NASCAR, and we'll tell you more after we remind you about NASCAR.com, your online 24-hour garage pass. Want to get all the news about NASCAR, scoring, all the latest info? Log on, as we all do. NASCAR.com, they'll bring you up to speed. You heard the comment from the team saying that they didn't agree with the uh, ruling. Uh, just to pass along to you what's being said on the NASCAR radio, which we all monitor in our right ear while talking to you guys. Uh, David Hooch, who is the Winston Cup race director, not the series director, Gary Nelson, but the man who actually runs the race, he has said, please tell the seven team that we will show them the video after the race is over that they did get the caution flag prior, you know, just as the accident happened. And he said, it's not an arguable question. We have the verifiable proof. And, and certainly when the day is done, they'll go in and look at the video and, and show it to the team. But uh, I'll tell you, NASCAR doesn't make many mistakes. They really, really don't. They know what they're doing with this stuff. Especially when you're staring at a TV monitor. As, uh, yeah, that helps. As everybody has been. All right, going back to work here. Now remember, the 20 car on the outside, about the fifth car back, there's your race leader, Tony Stewart. 
Then Bobby Labonte is second. Mimicek is third. Nadeau is fourth. All those guys out in front of them are hoping to hope that there's a caution flag right about now so they can get back in this ball game. Well, there's a lot of cars right now that's going to have to run harder than they want to to stay ahead of the 20 car there, Tony Stewart. Boy, Jarrett did not have a good work through that corner there. That car really loaded up on him, and he had to woe it down. Look at the mess the leader is in. Tony Stewart in that orange number 20 is your leader. Cars all around him. And the guys he is going by right now, he is basically putting them a lap down. That is why they're fighting so hard. Craven, who led so many laps in the 50 car, wiggles in the back end, just trying to keep Tony Stewart from passing him. And he's going to do it for the moment. Now watch again with the live action in the upper left. Watch the right-hand portion of your screen. Look at Jarrett right there in the middle. You see him? Makes it four wide there for a quick second. He gets on the brakes. Look at Steve Park in that yellow number one having to calm down and get things settled. John Andretti, your outside pole winner, is in the pits. Unscheduled stop for John Andretti. Hood oh. going up. So all of this action on the track at lap number 109, and indeed, John Andretti having problems. The green number 18 and the number 6 of Mark Martin. Labonte and Martin, they are battling for second spot. Number three, Dale Earnhardt, he's running in sixth place now. Well, I noticed he was pushing and shoving a little bit himself there in that heavy traffic, trying to get by his own car there. Steve Park, the yellow car just behind him. I'm amazed Earnhardt is running this well. That car has been absolutely rotten all weekend long. And <laughs> one of the practice sessions, he was 42nd out of 44 cars. And they just have not been able to make it cut through the corners. Uh, at 8 o'clock this morning in the garage, they still didn't know what they were going to do to fix it. But obviously, they have. Steve Burns, what's wrong with Andretti's car? Eli, we're outside the uh, infield care center waiting on Jimmy Spencer. And as Johnny Andretti entered pit road, we could hear that he had at least lost one cylinder. The motor sounded just awful. And now they have the hood up. So behind the wall goes the Cheerios entry. That's a battle for position there on your screen, folks. 33, Joe Nimichek. 3, Dale Earnhardt. That's fifth and sixth place. Bernard should make the pass, but the outside groove is beginning to work on the high side. But you can see right there when he picked up the throttle, the two cars running basically. Nemechek will pull back now. But down into turn one, this shouldn't be a race anymore. Right at 9,000 RPMs, we're in tops out. Now, because of all these guys who are a lap down and so on, we'll set it for you again. The one car, Steve Park, is not in that mix. Steve is in 32nd, one lap down. Only the three of the 33, Earnhardt and Nimicek battling for position there. And they're going for fifth and sixth. Got a good memory. Remember back to the Bush Series race here in 1992. Nimicek, Earnhardt battling for the lead. And in the very late stages, Nimicek beat him and won. Not today, Earnhardt got him. If you want to know how to take advantage of a good place there, did you see Earnhardt just move up a little bit and take the angle off it so Nemechek couldn't turn and he went right by him. So that's a good battle right there. Race leader, though, is still that orange number 20 of Tony Stewart trying to put the others around him a lap down. Hey, folks, you can enter TNN's Red Wing Shoes, Work Hard, Win Big Sweepstakes, and you could be a winner. Just tell us the position of John Andretti's car at the halfway point of the race, and you can win the final grand prize trip to a NASCAR Winston Cup race aired here on TNN or one grand prize Dodge Ram. It's easy to enter. Just go to your local participating Red Wing shoe store for an official entry form or send your name, age, address, phone number, and the answer on a postcard to the address you see on the screen. Or if you'd like, you can enter online at country.com. It's TNN. Red Wing Shoes work hard, win big sweepstakes. Right now, John Andretti is behind the wall in his 39th spot. While the King looks to see how the other cars from Petty Enterprises are doing.
CNN Sports live coverage of the ThatLook.com 300 is being brought to you by Mobile One. Nothing outperforms Mobile One. Welcome back to New Hampshire. Caution is on the speedway for rain. Caution is on the speedway for rain. This maneuver right here is for Tony Stewart to try and put Ward Burton a lap down and keep him there. They are coming to the caution flag. That's not the battle for position. Ward is trying to stay on the lead lap out of turn number four. He is going to be able to do so. To the infield care center. Jimmy Spencer is out of the uh, infirmary. Let's get an update. Yeah, thanks, Eli. He just limped out. Jimmy. What happened? Tell us about your leg. Uh, the came up car was running really good, Rick and Rich, and uh, uh, you know, just no warning. The tire went down, ran over something on the race truck, evidently, and uh, you know, I wasn't knocked out or nothing. I just was hard on the brake, and it slammed into the steering column. I couldn't feel nothing for about 30 seconds. It scared me. When my knees fine. Kmart car, I feel bad for my guys. We worked hard. I really feel like the Kmart team is going to have a top 10, top 5 finish today. The car was awesome. Unlucky for us today. Jimmy, Trina, I'm okay, baby. I'll see you in a little while. Thanks, Jimmy. Let's go to Ralph Shaheen. Well, John Andretti is inside talking to the other side of the window where the king is, Richard Petty, his car owner. John, any idea what happened to the engine in this car? Did you have any indication it was going to go sour on you? Um, I couldn't quite hear what you were saying, but um, uh, early in the race, we started having a misfire. And, um, and it's disappointing. Um, things happen. And... Um, we had a good car, but um, who knows where we would have shook out at the end. So I'm pretty happy with the way the team's worked and uh, done a great job. Just one of those unfortunate situations. The engine is being worked on pretty fiercely right now, and the rain is going to benefit these guys. Eli will give them a few slower laps to try to get things fixed if they can. You see on the onboard cameras just a few raindrops. But if you're not familiar with this sport, you know that there, I mean, I know that there is no tread at all on these tires. Obviously, that's a very elementary uh, item for many of you who follow the sport regularly. But uh, you see Rusty making the stop, a uh, wet racetrack and slick racing treads or slick racing slicks, if you will, did not make for a, a good combination. Eli, all these cars right here made up that lap that they were about to go down. Now they are at the back of the field, so they have nothing to lose. Come in get fresh tires, fuel, go back out. Let's go to Glenn. Well, guys, you're exactly right, guys. And uh, Ward Burton just uh, came in. He made a four-tire change. And I'm telling you what, guys, <laughs> he's my new hero. He did one whale of a job in holding off Tony Stewart to, to go that lap down. I'm telling you, that was that was an awesome display of driving. On the outside lane, that's pretty hard to do when the guy's got fresh tires on you and uh, you're battling and he, you're in the outside and the leader with fresh tires on the inside. But uh, great job of these guys. They got him down away. A little bit of trouble. Here's Ralph. Bobby Labonte has decided to come down pit road and take four tires, Glenn. They had an absolutely phenomenal stop last time at 15.3. Going to work now on the left side here. Everybody watching the skies. The rain continues to fall. And this one's just a little bit slower, 15.8. But another very solid stop for the crew, the number 18. Now, as you can see, it's a very light rain that is falling. If you could keep the race cars on the speedway, the heat that comes out of the header pipes will do as much in keeping this track dry as will anything. Yeah, and you can see the clouds. They're kind of broken there. It's not, a, you know, a solid overcast where you're going to have a downpour, I don't think. But the one thing I do want to talk about, Jerry Nadeau, what a great oh, drive he's had today. He's in second spot right now. And I tell you, anybody that was in Charlotte this year, watched him win the Open there and, and move on into the uh, Winston itself. He did a great job in there, was running second there. Uh, he just did a great job. And his crew chief, uh, Fur, told me, let me tell you something. This guy is the star of the future. He is a native of Danbury, Connecticut, calls this track his home track. And his experience here includes three wins in the Skip Barber Pro Series, including one from the pole back in 1995. Welcome back, everybody. You see the rain now beginning to intensify on uh, the onboard camera for Mark Martin and the Valvoline Cummings team. So we continue to circulate under the yellow with Tony Stewart as the race leader. Let's go over some strategy here. We saw leaders come in at lap 101 
through lap 105. Then at lap 125, we saw a number of the leaders come in. Then Bobby Labonte waited to lap 126. What was Jimmy Maycar's strategy on that kind of a call? Let's go down to the pit lane and find out, Ralph. Eli, I'm sitting here with Jimmy Maycar. Okay, the guessing game now. What was your strategy thinking to come down and pit then as the rain begins to fall? Well, actually, uh, it was a screw-up. <laughs> we, uh, we, we got talking too much about how much rain was coming uh, by the guys watching the, the rain uh, on the radar and uh, didn't get an opportunity to call them in the first time. We wanted to pit the first time and get uh, right side tires because the race isn't official yet. We know we'll be going back either later today or on another date. So uh, we just screwed up and didn't get on pit road early enough the first time. And then once we did that, we figured we had nothing to lose by getting four tires, uh, uh, setting ourselves up in a position to maybe take two later on. So Okay, but this could work out in your favor if it does go back to racing this could all cycle back around and then you could be in a good position right yeah that's true i mean we we needed to come in that time uh, to get tires anyway uh we just missed the opportunity by one lap lost uh six seven positions uh by doing it see what a buddy am i tried to give you a chance to save your face a little bit there <laughs> glenn and the, and the cars that he lost those positions to, Ralph, are the two of Rusty Wallace, 11 of Brett Bodine, 28, Ricky Rudd, 94, Bill Elliott, 60, Jeffrey Bodine, 88, Dale Jarrett, and 22, Ward Burton. Those were the guys who were at the tail end of the lead lap. As soon as the caution came out and the pit road was open, those guys, when they made up their lap, they came in and got fresh tires anyway because they were going to be at the tail end of the field, so they weren't going to lose anything. Those are the only positions that Jimmy's talking about that he, that he lost there was to those guys right there. Here's Steve Burns. Hey, thanks, Glenn. We're over at the NASCAR trailer, and a lot of the race teams have come over here to look at the weather radar. Uh, it's cycling through right at the moment. Jack Roush was just here looking at the screen. I said, Jack, what do you think? I'm not a weather man. He said, I think we're going to get a lot of rain. It really is a big system. As you can see now, it's just here's the racetrack as the computer is starting to cycle through. You can't see it that well, but this is a large green front right here. Racetrack's here, a large front. And that's unfortunate. The weather guesser up here in this area had said that we would have rain but late this afternoon into the uh, early evening and late evening hours. And clearly here it's only 20 minutes of 3 uh, Eastern time. Roger Penske not bothered by the few raindrops that are uh, falling up on uh, the roof. You might have seen, well, you just saw a gentleman walk by there. You got a glimpse of the back of his head. That was Wayne Auten, who was the uh, series director for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. And uh, in addition to having observers all around the track and, of course, the pace car driver, Wayne was outside there trying to find out exactly uh, what the uh, situation was like to get a good gauge on how bad it is raining. They are going to throw the red flag here. NASCAR has just decided to throw the red flag, and that is the running order at this moment. There are a grand total of uh, 31 cars on the lead lap. So your first 31 that you'll be seeing will be uh, on the lead lap. The remainder are at least one lap down. They are going to cover the cars, bring them down the pit lane. We will cover our cameramen, so we won't bring them down pit lane. Mack Trucks are furnished by Clement Chevy Max Ale. For all your truck and tractor needs, call Clement at 1-800-369-MACK. And by Featherlight, the official trailer of NASCAR, CART, IRL, NHRA, ASA, and World of Outlaws. Remember to call Featherlight for all your trailer and motor coach needs at 800-800-1230. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, just a moment ago, actually just 48 seconds ago, the red flag was put out, and it is not a, a heavy rain. NASCAR, as a matter of fact, is going to ask the drivers to stay right at their cars. They will allow them to get out, as you see. Tony Stewart there. He saw Johnny Benson. Uh, the King is going back to the garage to check on John Andretti's machine, though the word is that they have withdrawn that one from uh, competition today. Many of the drivers are just going to sit in their cars. Other as we say, we'll just get out and stand by the machines. NASCAR hoping that this is a very short caution period. There's Sterling Marlin and the Coors Light entry. We're only 19 laps shy of halfway, but 
Uh, NASCAR is not going to just go around and run 19 miles under yellow and call it a day. They owe it a whole lot more than that to the fans who have bought their tickets. Yes, the race fans, they bought a whole ticket, not a half one. Well put. So we've had an awful lot of rain lately. Michigan really rain have. shortened, and then we had the Pocono rain. And, and the Bush series had two rain delays last week in Milwaukee. Yep, and now rain here. But, of course, this is New England, and it does rain a good bit here. Greg Zipidelli, a uh, New Englander himself, uh, is going to take a moment to unwind here and, and see what uh, the rest of this afternoon has in store. We'll get uh, Glenn Jarrett to get you a rain suit because Mr. Bergeron here rode his Harley in this morning. That was smart, don't you think? <laughs> of course, of course. And it was kind of you to ask if I'd like to ride back to the hotel with you. I, I just think so. thought I'd see how that would work, Eli, in the back of the rear, bike. Too much rear weight, I'm afraid. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go down to the pit lane and uh, join the... Uh, the bench racing that's going on, Glenn. <laughs> well, bench racing or uh, on track racing, Tony Stewart's still leading either way. Uh, boy, you got an awesome car. I know you had to see this rain, Greg. Yeah, we did, at least for another 20 laps or so. I don't think we've been happy to see it. Uh, Tony's done a good job. He, uh, he likes coming here. I like coming here. It's kind of like coming home. And uh, we've had a good car here last year and haven't been able to close the deal. And uh, now, I don't know, now the rain just throws another curveball in there for us. But uh, hopefully we'll be able to get back racing and uh, bring that Home Depot Pontiac to victory lane. Well, I, I made a statement a while ago. I have to tell you, I have to own up to this about when the when the terrific battle was going on. Ward trying to keep uh, Tony from getting uh, or putting him a lap down, and and uh, when when the caution came out, I came on. I said Ward was my hero, and I know it really wasn't your hero, but you know what would Tony have done differently if she had been on the other foot? Yeah, I mean we we wanted to put him a lap down because because they were holding us up, and we wanted to we wanted to go and lead. And uh, but I understand what they what they were doing, and uh, I wouldn't expect anything different. And we were kind of being cautious. Uh, we didn't want to get ourselves in a situation, and. Uh, we didn't want to get bored and in, in, in trouble. It was some good, clean racing, and uh, they got their lap back. Uh, hopefully, someday it'll play in favor. We'll come back our way, you know. It always does, guys. One more thing about this team: the normal spotter for this team is Mark Robertson, and Mark is not here this weekend because his wife Melanie was injured uh, in a diving accident in a lake near Richmond, Virginia. So today, Gary Plattenberger is spotting. So Tony's got a brand new spotter. I tell you, Tony and Gary doing one whale of a job. Here's Ralph Shaheen. Well, we're standing over here with Jerry Nadeau, who's having a very good run. Jerry, tell me about your car here today. It seems to be working very well. What changes did you make to find this speed today? Uh, it's not bad. I mean, the MichaelHogan.com car has been running great since the beginning. Uh, you know, we just kind of been biding our time. Uh, we had two awesome pit stops. Uh, that last pit stop was just amazing. Uh, we came in eighth and came out fourth. And I got on the outside, and the car was awesome. You know, past Bobby and, and uh, Mark Martin. And then got up to Tony, and I saw Tony and Ward Burton battling there pretty hard. I know Ward was trying to stay on the lead lap. And, but, uh, man, it's an evil racetrack for the first few laps. It's real slick, and but the guys did a good job. Uh, I don't know why they just didn't run 18 more laps, call this thing, and... I mean, it's been a tough weekend, and uh, I think everybody just wants to get out of here. How much will this rain make that slick condition you were talking about three times worse? I tell you what, you know, we've been loosening the car up as we got along, but in the beginning of the race when the track was real green, the, the track was wicked loose. I mean, there was like no grip at all until maybe you laid down some rubber on the track. And uh, it's going to be, I tell you what, it's going to be, I'm waiting to hear what's going to happen. You know what, Glenn? I really like talking to Jerry Nadeau. This is a good driver when he holds an umbrella for the broadcaster. <laughs> it's not that way down here. I'm with Sterling Marlin. He ain't holding nothing for me but a big smile. Man, what a charge from the rear of the field. Uh, I know you had to enter today's race with a lot of mixed emotions, Sterling. I tell you that. It's been such a tragic thing, the loss of Kenny. And uh, uh, I guess the best thing for a race driver is to get out there in your race car and race. Well, it is. You know, our prayers and thoughts with Kenny's family. And uh, it was a tragic deal, I mean. I was probably the last one seeing going out the trailer and uh, getting a race car to go practice. So, uh, you know, we thought about it all weekend. And it would be good if we put the Coors Chevy in Victor Lane. We sure would like to. We've got a good car. It's real good on the long run. And uh, if it ain't over yet, look like it may be over today. So uh, we'll keep trying. Okay. Congratulations on a great run so far. Our thoughts and prayers with you and the rest of the Sabco team. Well, we're with Dale Earnhardt Jr. Dale I was talking to Tony Urie Jr. while we were still, you know, racing. And he says you were awful tight. Tell us about your race car. Uh, we just push in the center and push real bad coming off. Uh, left front tire ain't on the ground. We got to get some. Uh, we got to get some right rear spring or some rubbers in the right rear to get the left front down, get the car back. It's going around the corner, picking up the left front, and uh, the right front just starts giving up after a while. But 
We had the car handling pretty good in practice, and uh, but with all the other series running here, it's kind of thrown us a curveball. We're really not uh, experienced enough to, to deal with the changes of the track and the way the track changes, and it sure changes a lot here. Dale, you're still a young man. Uh, has it been difficult for you to focus on racing, what with the uh, tragic passing of Kenny Irwin? Yeah, um, you know, I kind of had some, uh, I kind of been around Kenny in the past and uh, knew him pretty well, uh, probably not as well as most people around here, but uh, yeah, it's going to be tough to, tough to deal with for a while. Um, you know, you don't like to see that happen, especially um, as often as we've seen it. Thanks for your thoughts. Thank you. An emotional Dale Earnhardt Jr. here in New Hampshire. Well, the rain now is beginning to fall a good bit harder as in NASCAR parlance, we're starting to lose the racetrack. The track is now becoming rather wet as we are under the red flag in New Hampshire. Well, it's the latest in rain wear. The giant hefty bag. But regretfully, we're having to see it today. We are under a rain delay. The red flag came out 10 minutes and 16 seconds ago as the uh, rain shower moved in. Just, uh, what, 18 laps shy of halfway here in the uh, event. The race leader, Tony Stewart. Let's go downstairs and get a thought from him. Well, he's just relaxing on top of the cooler right now. The last time the rain spell in Michigan, you ended up in the right place at the right time. How about today? How tough is it going to be to repeat that, do you think? I don't know. I mean, I'm still thinking about just running 300 laps and trying to win a 300-lap race. So, you know, we can't predict or control what's going to happen with this rain. But, uh, you know, we got an awful good car today. So, uh, you know, we just do the best we can. And, uh, you know, there's some good cars right behind us. And then that caution helped a bunch of guys, too. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Well, you know, I don't like to pick on you too much, so tell me a little bit about this most popular Bachelor of the Year award you got for the magazine. I uh, know I was in the top, uh, in, in People Magazine's uh, top 100 most eligible bachelors, I guess, but uh, I got a little blonde girl sitting back in my bus that says otherwise, so uh, she keeps me pretty good company, but, uh, you know, we want to... I want to say hi to uh, Mark Robertson and his wife Melanie. She's she just got out of surgery. Uh, she was paralyzed this past weekend, so uh, we're thinking about her. And you know we're all missing Kenny this week, but uh, you know we're just kind of wait wait this weather out, see what happens here in a little bit. All right, hang in there. I know it's a tough weekend for you, Glenn. Thanks, uh, Ralph. I'm up here with uh, Robert Presley, and uh, first thing I want to say is uh, you guys had a pretty good qualifying run. I think you started 21st, uh, and uh, great run so far in the race. You've moved your way up to sixth. Robert, what's been the difference in the turnaround in this race team? Oh, it's just uh, preparation of these race cars every week. You know, Ryan and all them guys have done a great job. I mean, our shop guys are doing a good job. Everybody is. Uh, and it, it's making it easy for me to drive these race cars. I mean, I enjoy this right here, and uh, it ain't nothing I've changed. It's just the race cars we've got now. For those of you that don't know, the Ryan that he's talking about is his new crew chief, Ryan Pemberton, moved over from the 36 team this year. And the one thing that I have noticed, though, is to get those cars into that position to where it fits you, you and Ryan have to communicate, and that looks like what's going on now. You found somebody that you, Robert Presley, can really work with and get some get some results out of. Well, the thing is, he watches me drive, and then he uh, works on the race car according to what it needs and what I'm asking for instead of what he done a year ago or two years ago, you know. He, he wants what the race car does, and, I mean, he'll get on me about a line I'm running. We'll change a line if it's good. Okay, that's the way to go, buddy. If it ain't, let's try something else. I mean, it is. And second half of this year, I think things are going to look better. It's got to make you feel a whole lot better about coming to the racetrack each and every week, knowing that you've got better equipment, better prepared equipment, and, and people that you can communicate with to get what you want out of the car. That's a, that's a great thing about it now is uh, we're a race car now, not just a field car anymore. So really happy for this whole Jasper team. And, I mean, as me and Ryan get to know each other more and more, I think things are going to get better. Robert, I know how tough it is, uh, particularly back in the pack, in, in the middle of the pack, the racing back there, sometimes tougher than it is up front. Guys won't give anything, but when you get a good race car under you and you're able to race these guys, do you find it? Hey, you're getting a little more respect from everybody else now. Well, you get a little more respect, but I'll tell you, anybody that runs from 20th back, man, they work a lot harder than them guys in top 20. I mean, I've been back there and uh, I know what it's like, but this uh, this brings back a lot of these bush days where we run up front, so it's feeling good. Well, it's got to be feeling good. You know, Eli, it doesn't seem fair. The, the guys running back about 15th or 20th race so much harder, but they don't get paid as much. Hi, right, guys. Thank you very much. There you see the uh, weather radar. That right there is Loudoun, New Hampshire.
And all of this right here is ugly old rain. So uh, we're going to stay here and uh, keep things going. But again, that dot area right there you saw was Loudon, and that's where uh, we are located. And they have now given the driver's clearance to head back to the uh, garage. Hey, it's sad. Not that you want to see a race go halfway, but obviously uh, it is official at halfway. We were about eight minutes shy of getting to that uh, spot. You see Bob Bear there. Just a quick look at the uh, uh, owner, founder of this uh, fine racetrack, one of the classiest guys in the world of racing. We're going to come right back and uh, continue. There's Bob Bear. What we are going to do after this commercial break, we're going to uh, be bringing you some uh, look back at last year's Jiffy Lube 300 because that's going to be uh, far more entertaining to you at the time being. We'll, of course, be standing by here. We'll update you periodically. So after the break, we'll go back a year to last year's race. Welcome back, everybody, live at New Hampshire International Speedway. We have been under the red flag now for 47 minutes and 41 seconds as a rain shower passed by the Loudoun, New Hampshire area. Good news is that for the last short while, the rain has stopped and NASCAR has continued with track drying. And hopefully we are closing in on the restart of today's race in between what is expected to be another rain shower. When racing resumes, you'll see Jeff Burton's Exide Ford Taurus, the number 99 machine, carrying a special logo insignia today. This is the 50th anniversary of the Korean War. And Charles Cragen is with us, the Assistant Secretary of Defense for the United States. And it's a pleasure to have you with us, Mr. Secretary. And it's great to see NASCAR getting involved in uh, remembering uh, those who were involved in the Korean War. Well, thanks, Eli. It's a real pleasure to be here. And I might point out that the button I'm wearing is a very small replica of the logo that appears on Jeff's car. Let's talk about why the involvement with NASCAR. Everybody wants to honor the Korean War, and certainly there have been so many veterans who've come through NASCAR. Was that the thinking as to why to hook on with Jeff Burton? Well, it really was. Uh, NASCAR folks generally, if I could make a generalization, are very patriotic people. Sure. And, uh, you know, a lot of people have referred to the Korean War as the Forgotten War. Well, this gives us an opportunity to make sure it's not forgotten anymore, that the men who served and many who gave their lives we remember them and the valor that they uh, exhibited. Now, when you were with us during the pre-race activities, and hopefully you folks at home had a chance to enjoy them along with us, we had a couple of flybys here, and I understand uh, you, sir, are the person to thank for that. Well, I would say that the, the people to thank are the men and women that flew those aircraft. We had uh, Air National Guard personnel from the state of New Hampshire in a KC-135 tanker, mm -hmm. uh, two F-16 fighter pilots from the Vermont Air National Guard, and uh, eight uh, uh, pilots and crew in two B-1 bombers that launched on a training mission this morning out of uh, Kansas. And uh, believe it or not, we were the target. Uh, that they were training to today as they flew over the New Hampshire International Speedway. Well, Mr. Secretary, great to have you with us. And again, thanks for all you do with, with veteran affairs and the reservists and so on. And uh, we're all happy that NASCAR and TNN today can be part of uh, this remembrance of the 50th anniversary of the Korean War. Well, thank you for your support. Our pleasure. Charles Cragen is the Assistant Secretary of Defense for the United States. Right now, you get a better look at that logo as our cameras have uh, worked in a position to show you the uh, hood of Jeff Burton's Exide Ford Taurus. That logo pretty much says it all. Right now, down on trackside, we are understanding that NASCAR feels the track is dry enough to put the race cars back out there and to then hopefully, with the heat generated off the header pipes, to continue the track drying. We are just at this point 18 laps shy of halfway. That's about nine minutes of racing. And not that NASCAR is looking to go only to halfway. They're hoping to get the entire event in. But at the same time, they would like to get whatever chance they can to go racing before the next set of rain showers move in. So they have refired the engines. The red flag is withdrawn after 50 minutes and 59 seconds. Tony Stewart is the leader. Jerry Nadeau is second. Mark Martin third. Dale Earnhardt fourth. And Joe Nimichek fifth. When we come back, Buddy and Dick, Glenn, Steve, Ralph are all set to go racing. Back in a minute. Earlier today, 
This NASCAR Winston Cup event got underway shortly after 1 o'clock Eastern time. Just five laps later, Terry Labonte and Chad Little found themselves in the wall. Both cars retiring for the day. Mike Skinner had problems on lap 28, brought out the caution for the second time. Lap number 99, it was Jimmy Spencer who found himself in the wall, hurt his leg in the process and limped away. And then the caution came out for rain at lap 124. The red flag flew at 2.41 Eastern time. And then at uh, 51 minutes later, where we are right now, the cars have refired. Pit road is open and the teams can choose to make a stop at this point if they would so choose. Those in the garage, Terry Labonte, Chad Little, Mike Skinner, and Jimmy Spencer, you saw all of their incidents. John Andretti is done for the day with engine problems. If you're wondering whether your favorite driver has led it all today, our pole sitter, Rusty Wallace, led lap number one. John Andretti, lap number two. Ricky Craven led from laps three through 66. Jeffrey Bodine led from 67 to 86. And Tony Stewart took over the lead at lap number 87 and leads to this very moment. So I'll take a look at the field now and see where your favorite driver is running. Well, this is going to be an absolute shootout because there's more rain behind this rain delay that we have just had. You can better believe they're all going to be on the gas hard when the green comes out. Again, the situation, if you're just tuning in, we are at lap 134 now, as you see. 150 makes up halfway and makes us an official race. So with, as the doctor told you, and as you saw on the radar earlier, we had that shot for you of the, of the weather radar. You saw there's rain extending all the way back into uh, Buffalo, New York, and actually towards and over uh, the Great Lakes. Uh, there is a small window of opportunity here to get some racing in. And well, it's going to be interesting to see how Tony Stewart can make that Pontiac wide, as they say, wider is better, to try and keep everybody behind them. Eli, if I'm not mistaken, they're giving one to go right now. Let's go to Glenn Jarrett. Okay, guys, Eli, you're exactly right. He will try to make it wide, but I tell you, as fast as he is, he doesn't have to worry about that too much. There haven't been many cars past him today. Uh, his crew chief, Greg Zipidelli, told him when they first went back under the racetrack, do not pit, stay out. We'll hope for a caution in 50 to 60 laps. Right now, those cars that are up front only have about 15 uh, to 18 green flag laps uh, on those tires. So uh, tires are still good. We saw earlier on in the race when uh, some of the guys, most of the guys, did it with uh, 29 laps. Uh, it really didn't seem to make any difference. So tires are good to go. We're just going to go racing as long as we can. If you want to know who's the lap down, just look on the inside there. The, all the cars on the inside lane there are lap down. One through 31. The first 31 positions are on the lead lap. Come here, pass to your right. Ready. 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 Green, green, green. After a red flag for rain, we're going back to work 14 laps from halfway. Kevin LePage, he is not on the lead lap, that white and purple machine. He is trying, though, to get his lap back. Jerry Nadeau in the 25, however, is, and he would love to grab the lead. Boy, Tony Stewart just washed way up the racetrack going into turn one. Right now, Kevin LePage trying to get his lap back there, and he's got Stewart hung up on the outside. So Kevin LePage now on the tail end of the lead lap, and it's going to hold up Stewart because here comes Nadeau. Second place, Jerry Nadeau fighting to get the lead as they come off the corner. Tony Stewart gets a little better forward by getting up off the corner now. They go off into the corner. Nadeau washes high there. Don't say wash. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Slides up. There you Slides go. Up. All right. There are a bunch of guys that seem to be having a hard time staying down in the bottom of the racetrack right now. Cars have all set still. That's third place you're looking at on your screen. Mark Martin, right behind him, Dale Earnhardt. They do still in second spot. Everybody again keeping their eye on the track and on the skies because there is more rain in the area, says the weather guesser. 
Parking that yellow car, he's a lap down. He's trying to get by the 20th Stewart as well. Oh, uh -oh. Bernhardt almost spun Mark Martin around. And he allowed him to save him. Dale could have put him away. Yes, he could. And he, he just backed off the throttle. You see Mike Bliss right there. He's battling around trying to get up and make up one of his laps that he's down. Steve Park has just gotten around the race leader. And he has picked up a uh, position to get on the tail end of the lead lap as we check in with Ralph. I talked to Jimmy Fenn and crew chief for Mark Martin just as they got set to go back to racing. Eli, and I said, how's your car? And he said, well, we're okay, but we're not real, real fast. We can still race, but we're not as quick as we'd like to be. They haven't been good all weekend long. The car will go between push and loose and push and loose. But Boy, he's got his hands full now because Earnhardt is all over the back end of that thing. Now, what's going to happen now? The tires are getting hot, the racetrack is getting sticky again, and the good cars will start really moving out. Look for Tony Stewart to go right up there and pass those cars that made up that lap a while ago. I noticed Jerry Nadeau in second spot also putting the heat on. There's a big pack of traffic from 24th on back. What a He's pile of 25th. What a pile of good cars back there, Eli. Yeah. That pack of traffic. And all of this is because of the sequencing of pit stops before we went to the red flag for rain. Up front, Nadu, native of Danbury, Connecticut. Notice Nadu and Tony Stewart both were sliding out a little bit as they started off. Now they've got the heat back in the tires, air pressure's back up where they want it. These cars are beginning to fly around the racetrack. Looks like Nadu right at the moment is ever a bit as fast as Tony Stewart. Nadu has never won a Winston Cup race. He has a career top five finish one time only. He was fifth at Watkins Glen last year. This is his best chance ever in his career to win one of these things. And Mike Skinner's coming back on the racetrack after that car was all beat up earlier. Right, while well, we watch this battle on the racetrack, Mike Skinner returns from the garage. There he is, 116 laps down. 116 down, but he's out there nevertheless. Big Band-Aid on the back of that thing. Now remember, the 16 and the 1, the purple and white car and the yellow number 1, they are on the tail end of the lead lap. They are trying to stay ahead of the 20 of Tony Stewart. And the car of Jerry Nadeau just jumped sideways coming up out of the corner. He lost three or four car lengths, but he has straightaway speed in escrow right now. Laps shy of halfway. Tony Stewart took over the lead at lap number 87. We're now at lap 145, and remember, we've seen Tony wear him out here in the past, only to lose out to the fuel mileage. A lot yet to play out today. everybody we are halfway home here at the new hampshire international speedway the thatlook.com 300 as the teams get the halfway flags the cross flags so this is now an official event tony stewart is the race leader by the way if you're entering tnn's red wing shoes work hard win big sweepstakes john andretti will finish 39th today john andretti going out with engine failure earlier he will finish 39th so if you're going to participate go to a local red wing shoe store for an official entry form or just send your name age address and phone number to us or even enter online at country.com either way tnn's red wing shoes hard work win big sweepstakes could make you a winner the grand prize to an upcoming nascar winston cup series race or grand prize dodge ram truck john andretti the answer he will finish today in 39th position well after all the pit stops so you see the nascar's timing and scoring run down robert presley has been having some problems here of late slowing on the track and backsliding matter of fact the black flag will be out listen in sound healthy. No, it sounds awful. It's like a lot of black smoke rolling out of it. Robert's been talking the last few laps to the crew. Uh, they're going to have to bring him in for a carburetor change. They're going to try to ride 
tighter out. Hope it didn't get too bad, but it's getting worse every lap. So Robert will be in. They'll change the pump. Tough break, man. He had a good run going. So Robert Presley, you see him already low on the racetrack, and he'll be coming out of the pit lane for service. Brian Pemberton and the crew will be uh, awaiting him on pit road. for the Jasper engines and transmissions, number 77. Up front, that's the spread, four tenths of a second, about uh, 10 car lengths or so from Stewart back to Nadeau. Yeah, and just behind them, Joe Nemechek has turned it up a notch. He has really moved up. That's him right there in the 33 car, and he has really passed a, a bunch of cars since the restart. Working right in behind Scott Pruitt now. Look at that, from 30th to 3rd, Joe Nemechek. He had a tough qualifying run. They tried to get just a little bit more out of the car to try and get the pole. They loosened it up a little bit too much, and he had a bad run. But he was anticipating a good race today, but perhaps not this good. It's, he's having a great run for himself. Well, you know, he won here last year, Eli. Yes, he did. Picked up the victory here a season ago. You know something, guys, the way things are shaking out right now, of course, there's a lot of racing yet to go, but we ought to check the Haviland points for you because the way things are going right now, that man, Dale Earnhardt, has mathematically just taken over the NASCAR Winston Cup point lead as of this moment. He's running in the fifth spot, and Bobby Labonte is running in 24th. Haviland Formula 3 Motor Oil, adding more life to your car and bringing you that points. Last time Earnhardt was in first place at points in any stretch like this was way back in 1996. Wow. It was after the 15th race at Daytona prior to coming to New Hampshire back in 96. That was 132 races ago. And at this moment, Earnhardt is in first in points, so clearly we just passed halfway. And for the four people from Iceland that's never watched a race, he's going for an eighth championship. That's what makes it so special. And yeah, the thing that's given him this point advantage right now is he's got 14 top tens in the 17 races that we have run so far. And meanwhile, the guy who has held on to the points, Bobby Labonte, has become inconsistent. Right now, he is running in the 24th spot, and he's finishing A periodically in the top five or top ten. And Bernard's by, doing it consistently. By the way, buddy, we are carried live on Reykjavik cable. You know, <laughs> so you know I knew that. Even the folks in Iceland, too. <laughs> I just want to say hello to all four of them. <laughs> oh, goodness. You know, that's one of those weird deals where Iceland is green and Greenland is icy. Do you know that? I knew that. That's too. one of those yeah. backwards things. You'd think Iceland would be the uh, icy one. Meanwhile, looking back at Bobby Labonte <laughs> going down into turn one, just in front of him, Stacy Compton looking out of Bobby Labonte's car as he heads down the back straightaway and off the tricky turn two. Kind of like, why do we drive on the parkway and park on the driveway? And you notice that little loose piece of tape on the top up there. That's up to a, a piece of plastic that they pull off on the uh, pit stops and it clears the windshield so you have good visibility. Tony Stewart, the race leader. Took He's over at lap 87. There's a great look from the Midas Mall camera. The new Midas. A whole new way to keep a good thing going. Go Midas. Boy, there's a variance in speed there, isn't there? Oh, yeah. You can see some of the cars come off there. It looks like they're 20 miles an hour faster. And that is the great forward bike that you get. Some cars get great forward bike, and that's why they're leading the race right now. Some people come out there a little bit flatty, and they're not pulling as well, and you can see it. Flatty? <laughs> <laughs> I'll make up another one in a little while. We're 11 laps past halfway here in New Hampshire. Glad you're with us. After a near one-hour rain delay, all 101,000 fans are still hanging in. Glad you are also. CNN Sports live coverage of the ThatLook.com 300 is being brought to you by Route 66. Jeans, clothes, it's not Main Street, only at Kmart. Welcome back, everybody. Glad you're with us here at New Hampshire International Speedway. Eli Gold, Buddy Baker, the Dr. Dick Bergman, along with Glenn Jarrett, Steve Burns, Ralph Shaheen, the whole TNN Sports crew on hand with you. Riding with Bill Elliott. 
right behind him. You see Ward Burton. Now we're looking forward from Ward's car towards the 17th place running Bill Elliott. Weeds out right out against the wall. And there's that piece of tape I was talking about a while ago. That's where they pulled plastic off to clean the windshield on each pit stop. Remember, Bill Elliott had that unscheduled pit stop on lap 94 for those four tires, but manages to get back and stay on the lead lap. Here comes Ward right up on the quarter panel, and I hope Bill Elliott knows he's down there. That wouldn't be a good decision to pull down when they get up to there. And that is for position. Ward Burton will grab 17th away from Bill Elliott. Jeffrey Bodine right behind in the 60, and then Dale Jarrett in the 88. They are all battling for position. That is 17th, 18th, 19th, and 20th. And all these guys are battling their way back to the front because they were almost a lap down due to circumstances on the racetrack where they pitted out of, of sequence and, and got a lot, almost a full lap down. Now they're fighting their way back to the front. But nope. Jeffrey Bodine was the quickest car before that time. You notice though in turns one and two, Bill Elliott just can't keep his car on the low side of the racetrack. Each of the last two times by, it's cost him positions. Exactly what you're talking about right there. The car just washes right up the racetrack, and here comes Bobby Labonte under him. Again, that was in three and four, and one and two, it's even more noticeable. See it wash up. Melanie, that's for Melanie Robinson, the lady who was injured, diving into a lake. Husband Mark Robinson, crew member. 18 car. That's why we're showing you the action middle of the pack. You know, we've not talked about Jeff Gordon much. There he is running in eighth spot now as we look back uh, towards Gordon from Jeff Burton's car. Eli dropped back at the very start of the race, and now he seems to have made some adjustments on that car, and he's actually running much better than he was the first little bit of the race. He's in eighth spot right now, having a good day in car number 2434. This is the fifth race in a row here at New Hampshire that Jeff has run this same car. Why not? With five top fives in a row with that same car and a win in 1998, the September race. Good car. Of course, Jeff Gordon has also finished 20th or worse three times here at New Hampshire, so it's been feast or famine. Of course, these two guys, the guy we're riding with and the guy we're looking at, between them have six victories here. Exactly, three apiece, so uh, that's not a bad crowd to hang out with. Yeah, not at all. The guys that are mid-pack that really hope that the rain will hold off for quite a while because they've got good cars they're looking to be able to move up looking around there does not see if you folks can look overhead there those aren't necessarily rain clouds we're seeing that is overcast but we're not seeing a whole lot of rain at the moment there goes second spot Nemechek inside of Jerry Nadeau and you can see that Nadeau's car was not pulling up out of the center part of the corner the way it should. And by the time he got to the straightaway, Nemechek just drove right on by. So Joe Nemechek, who, as Dick mentioned earlier, beat Dale Earnhardt here in a NASCAR Bush Series race in 1992 and then won the NASCAR Winston Cup race here last uh, year. Just sweeps right by Nadeau. You know, Nemechek's one of the few people that has won Bush Grand National race here and a Winston Cup race. that many who have been able to pull that off. No, and, and they beat Earnhardt on the last lap here. We're not talking Great about shot. Dale Earnhardt, not Junior, on his first win ever here. And it was quite exciting. He passed him in the last corner. Putting Steve Park a lap down again, the leaders are. Just sitting here looking at the numbers, they came in at 101, then at 125 and 126. We're probably about uh, a dozen laps or so from another series of pit stops. Hey, folks, while we break away, something to think about. You know me. My hometown is Grand Rapids, Michigan. I have won championships in the American Speed Association and the NASCAR Bush Series. And this is my first year driving for Tyler Motorsports. Uh -huh. I know you know me. <laughs> but do the folks at home know me? We'll find out in a moment.
You know me. I was the 1995 NASCAR Busch Series champion and almost won the Daytona 500 this year. I am Johnny Benson. You know me is brought to you by your neighborhood Sitco. Johnny's running in 16th right now. And you see that quarter pound? Somebody out there needs to look at that because he has been so close to winning this year and they're looking for sponsorship at this moment. But look at the nose of that car. He has already put it in the back of one of these race cars out here. It's pretty well beat up there and that will hurt him just a little bit. Tony Stewart is the race leader. He's led 98 laps today. Joe Nimichek running second. His best of the year was fifth at Atlanta. Nadeau is running third. His best of the year was eighth at Sears Point. Martin is running fourth. Earnhardt is running fifth. Schrader is running sixth. Then you've got Jeff Burton, Gordon, and that guy. Look at Elliot Sandler in the top ten. His only top ten of the year was Texas back in March. And his best finish of the season with Starlington. You know, I was thinking about here, Nimichak is potentially his best finish of the year coming up. As we said, he's fifth now. Nadeau is eighth. Schrader is running sixth. His best finish of the year was ninth at the Daytona 500. And Sadler running in ninth, and his best of the year was 12th at Darlington. We've got a bunch of fellas now, uh, potentially, with their very best... Uh, finishes of the season. And there's, again, Elliot Sadler. I believe I said he finished uh, top ten in Texas back in March of this year. It was obviously March of last year. Uh, wouldn't mind it giving him the extra year's credit, but it was March of 99 when he had his uh, career best there at Texas. You know, and we talked about Elliot Sadler in the Wood Brothers car there. He's only had 52 starts up to today, so he's basically learning the racetracks and how to do the uh, Western Cup thing, if you will. And, and he has Mike Beam working with him, so it's going to be a good race team pretty soon, I think. Here comes Tony Stewart. He is in. Joe Nimichek becomes the race leader. This pit stop at lap number 188. Glenn Jarrett is on the pit lane. We thought they might wait until around lap 190. That's what we were told, but uh, evidently they wanted to. They're going to make a track bar adjustment. They're going to raise the track bar. Tony wanted the adjustment. They knew they were going to have to come in two laps. Wouldn't make that much difference anyway. Uh, this should start a whole bunch of guys coming in. Uh, they're going to change four tires. Guys, I got a feeling that some of those cars that lost track position that are back in the field might do a two-tire change. I don't know. Just to try to gain some track position. 16.9, that's a great stop, and they did make that rear track bar adjustment on Tony Stewart. Kenny Wallace has come on to the pit lane, as there you see Joe Nimichek. Now, when Joe won here last year, remember, he took on two tires late in the day while everybody else took on four, and that decision obviously paid off last year. Lap 189, Jeff Gordon comes down the pit lane. The DuPont team is in for service. Glenn? He is right beside, pitted right behind Tony Stewart. And they made a major track. They made a track bar adjustment on Jeff Gordon. Jeff Gordon's car as well. He is also changing four tires. Like I said, will be the guys maybe toward the rear. Jeff is down in the way in 17.2. So he lost about uh, three tenths to uh, Stewart on the exchange of pit stops there. All of these stops under the green. Here comes the race leader along with Dave Blaney. Joe Nimichek is in at lap 190. Blaney is also in. Steve Burns. Well, I, I would have liked Glenn Jarrett if they would go two tires instead of four. But we think Andy Petrie's crew will change four tires for Joe Nemechek. Tire changers are Alan Whitaker and Jason Enders. Doug Fowler, the Jackman, has Nemechek's car up. A little bit of problem on the left front for Joe Nemechek. 19.3 seconds. That was a costly pit stop. 19.3 under the green flag. That left front just didn't want to change, didn't want to come off. What a shame. So there's the new leader, Jerry Nadeau. Nadeau, who has led this year in Atlanta, where he led five laps. He led 115 laps in Charlotte and one lap in Pocono. He is leading as Kenny Schrader. Now comes the attention of the M&M's crew. He's in. So is Bobby Hamilton. Ralph? Well, and Kenny Schrader only took two tires, Eli. And now here comes Jerry Nadeau. He's going to make his pit stop now. And they are planning on uh, raising the track bar and dropping the air pressure on this stop. So Jerry Nadeau, they clean the windshield up. Take 
laid four tires and built fuel up on the 25. Now, Mark Martin has taken over as the race leader as Jerry Nadeau makes his stop. And there, Mark will stay on the racetrack and put another lap on the board. I'm a little surprised we're not seeing more two-tire changes as opposed to four-tire changes. These tires are not wearing out very much. There's not much of an advantage to four versus two. Many of the teams think four's the way to go. They're looking at a longer run. Well, you're exactly right. And earlier in the race, they, uh, some people changed tires and they did not run down the cars. They were even on tires that they didn't even have fresh right side. They were on the tires that they started the race on. So I don't think tires are a great advantage here. First time today, he has led. All three of those fellas have already come in for their pit stops. And Martin leads. Dale Earnhardt is second. Jeff Burton is now third, with Henry Jimmy Elliott Sadler running fourth. Rusty Wallace fifth, and Robert Presley making yet another pit stop. If you're following his exploits today. Yeah, and Joe Nemechek now, he changed all four as Earnhardt comes in the pit. Let's see what he does. Lap 196. Changing right side, you can see him cleaning the windshield up there. Guys going around to the left side, he'll take on four. Taking a little extra time, there's problem on the left rear. Problem at the left rear of Earnhardt's car, 20.7. Wow, there's a discussion going on there, I'll guarantee you. Another good reason to not change four. We've seen two teams have problems changing tires on the left side. Steve Grissom in for service as you look at Mark Martin, who's just staying out there. Jack Roush has been known for his great gas mileage, and he really works hard on the carburetion on these cars. He and uh, Jeff Burton, all these guys get great gas mileage. Now, according to my notes, you know, if he stops, if he can stretch it a little bit more here. Yeah, it might be the difference. It might be the difference. They were coming up on 200 laps complete. And you know, this guy certainly is deserving of a win here. He's led half the races, one, led five, won a pair of bowls here. He's finished second, third, fourth, fifth, never won so far. We show Not here. Steve Grissom in for service now. And he's driving for uh, Kyle Petty that did not come up here this week. Uh, they got Steve Grissom to fill in for Kyle Petty. And that is not a pretty pit stop either. And there you see some swapping around. Rusty Wallace slowing on the racetrack. Losing a couple of spots. Mayfield went by. Sadler went by. as the race leader has led 11 races this year that is tied with rusty wallace for the most races led in the 2000 season and he keeps trucking while frankie stoddard wants what's next for jeff burton Sports live coverage of the thatlook.com 300 is being brought to you by Ford F Series. The best selling trucks are built Ford Tough. Well, he's still out there. The last time Mark Martin pitted was at lap 102. Everybody's been asking that question. We were quite honestly wondering whether we had missed a pit stop somewhere. He has gone from 102 to 204. And Ralph Shaheen is awaiting Mark Martin. Well, he's coming down pit road now, Eli, getting set to come in. This is chassis JR82, which debuted at Bristol, ran 16th. They're not running any big changes to the car, just taking four tires and fuel. They tested this car last week at Lakeland, right after running in the Pepsi, and they feel pretty good about it. We heard Jimmy Fennick say earlier that the car is good, it's just not real, real fast. A 17 
That gives the lead to Jeff Burton, who now peels off the racetrack. And that will hand the lead to Jeremy Mayfield. So Burton will lead for one lap, and Mayfield takes over the top spot. Let's go to Glenn. And this is a regularly scheduled pit stop for Jeff Burton. Obviously, he was out there for a lap longer, I believe, than what Mark Martin was. Right now, they have, they have four tires up on the wall. We still haven't seen any two-tire changes. There is a chassis adjustment going into the left rear of the car. First can of fuel is in, second going. No problem so far. Looks like a pretty good stop so far, guys. And Jeff is down in the way. 16.9, and it looks like they did get all the fuel in it, too. So, mighty nice stop for Jeff Burton. So, the man with the Panama hat, Jack Roush, already doing his ciphering there. <laughs> Already computing it all. Jeremy Mayfield is the race leader, the winner at Pocono earlier this season. And Jeffrey Bodine has cycled back around to run second. Ricky Rudd is third. Dale Jarrett is now running fourth. And Bobby Labonte is fifth. Back in a minute. Welcome back, everybody. There you see the battles for the lead until it evaporates with Jeffrey Bodine and Dale Jarrett coming on to the pit lane at lap 214. I believe I said Dale Jarrett. Clearly, that's Ricky Rudd. So it is Jeffrey Bodine and Ricky Rudd who come in to make their scheduled stops. And if we stay green from this point, they could certainly go to the checkered flag. Ricky Craven is in. Matt Kenson is in. These are scheduled stops at lap number 214. And Jeremy Mayfield still out there. He was running just in front of these two guys here. But now the new leader becomes Dale Jarrett because Jeremy Mayfield, who was the race leader, comes in at lap 216. Jeremy, who has never finished on the lead lap in nine races here at New Hampshire International, in for service. You might have seen Ward Burton coming down pit road. He's in. Darrell Waltrip getting service. Steve? A four-tire change. They're having a problem on the left front. Lee McCall on the left front. 18 even, but a, a slow pit stop for Jeremy Mayfield, Eli. Here comes Dale Jarrett now. He was the 11th different leader of the race today. Back to his pit. Dale Jarrett makes his way into the pit box, and the crew goes to work. happy with the way this car is running right now. One can of fuel is in, back around to the left side now, and a fairly simple, clean, good, solid pit stop, and a very good time, 15.3 with four tires and two cans of fuel. Now here comes Bobby Labonte. He is going to come in to make his stop, and this is going to cycle things around to Dale Earnhardt Jr., Rather, Tony Stewart now, who passes Earnhardt Jr. on the racetrack. So Stewart becomes the leader again, Ralph. Yes, he does. His Bobby Labonte's crew goes to work now. Jimmy Maycar not looking as foolish as he did before, but this race going back to green, 16 even, and a solid stop for Bobby Labonte's crew. And that pit stop by Bobby Labonte ended a streak that came up one lead change shy of a very obscure NASCAR record. The record for most lead changes without a repeat leader was 13. Today we had had 12 leaders, 12 different leaders. Rusty Wallace, Andretti, Craven, Jeff Bodine, Stewart, Nimichek, Nadu, Martin, Jeff Burton, Mayfield, Jarrett, and Bobby Labonte. 12 of them until Tony Stewart becomes a repeat leader here today. So we came close to making a run on a NASCAR record. Here's Dale Earnhardt Jr. Lap 220. They changed the tires on his car. His teammate up there, Steve Park, ran out of fuel, it looked like, coming out of turn two. Coasted all the way down the back straightaway. I'm sure he fell many laps back doing that. Drivers who are making their stops now can certainly go the distance on fuel. The leader is Tony Stewart. Running in second is Nemechek. Nadu is third, Mark Martin fourth, and Schrader fifth.
Welcome back, everybody. Tony Stewart continues as the race leader here at New Hampshire International Speedway. It's not been without some interesting moments here in the last few laps. We've seen some beating and banging. We've seen a couple of lap cars going by. Watch this, first of all. Jeffrey Bodine in the 60 there. See him waving his hand out the window. Go on by. Our cameraman, Mike Coker, zeroing in on that there in the back straightaway. And indeed, Bodine went right by at the suggestion and urging of Stewart, who cannot, I wouldn't think, go the distance from here. He pitted at lap 188. Uh, Tony did it. Jeff Gordon pitted at 189. That some of those guys probably cannot go the distance. Now, folks, watch this. We <laughs> saw some beat and banging earlier. Watch in the lower portion of your screen. Watch a little extra forward fight for Steve Park. <laughs> yeah, Johnny Benson says, I'll just help you a little bit. He moves him over. Now watch the four car there. Bobby Hamilton gives him a little side by side. And here comes Ward Burton says, don't hog up all the fun. I want to get in on this too. Well, that little action also put a hole in the grill area in the front of Benson's car. You just saw a quick glimpse of it there. Here you can see it real well. All he needs now is a little tiny piece of debris. That radiator sitting wide open naked. Any debris is just going to punch a hole in it for him. Meanwhile, I'll tell you that uh, overhead's getting a little darker. You folks can probably see that at home as well. The uh, cloud cover has intensified here in the last little while. Riding with Jeff Burton in the number 99 car. Jarrett and he are battling for 10th and 11th. Now riding with Dale Jarrett. Let's watch him go down in the corner. You'll see Jarrett getting in the corner just a little bit better. And you can do that when you're riding directly. Now they're both getting back. A little rain see that? there. Did you see that? Yeah. Whoa. A little push there. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a very physical race. Look at the side of DJ's car. Tire marks all over it. Uh, it seems as if a good percentage of these cars are in some way battle scarred in today's race. Now, yeah. Mayfield is in that mix also for position. Buddy, when you were racing or any of these guys, when you started seeing a couple of little raindrops of you all of a sudden, Say, all right, forget about uh, common sense and let's do it. Yeah, you have to get a little more aggressive. And right there, I mean, that does not look like a lot. They're out there on slick tires. So any more than that, and they'll have to put the caution out again. And perhaps the race ends. So you have to go to the front if you possibly can. If you're a Robert Presley fan, the electrical problems that they've been having on their car have finally put them out for the day. Terry Labonte, Chad Little, John Andretti, Jimmy Spencer, and now Robert Presley, the retirees' electrical system problems that have been bothering that uh, team ever since the early stage of this afternoon. Watching Jeffrey Bodine in the uh, 60 car, the, where he's at in the standings right now has nothing to do with the way he's driven that race car today. It has to give them a little boost that they have had one of the better cars just his stops and different things we put him way back in the field right now. now he's running 14 but he did lead earlier Stewart you wonder if he's going to win one of these things in a Winston Cup car last year in this race he led more laps than anybody else misplaced the gas situation ran out of fuel the September race here last year motor skipped at the end he wound up finishing second the IRL car the Indy car he ran three times here led the most laps in all three races one in 98 the other two he was 12th and 14th this place owns Tony Stewart Glenn Jarrett's down in his pit well guys uh, it might own Tony Stewart but what they're hoping for now is that the heavens open up because as I said earlier uh, reported to you during break they cannot make it all the way on fuel neither Tony Stewart in number 20 nor Jeff Gordon in number 24 have enough fuel to run the remaining 64 laps. They're going to have to stop one more time. There are a, little, a few raindrops falling right now. They're hoping that the heavens open up, Steve Burns. Well, Glenn, same situation for Joe Nemechek in the number 33 who's running second. They stopped on lap 190. They cannot make it. Kenny Strader, the number 36, who's running fifth. They only got 15 gallons of gas on that last pit stop. Let's go to Ralph Shaheen. Well, Jerry Nadeau in the 25 is going to come up about five laps short, says Crew Chief Tony Furr. But get this, the 14 of Rick Nash, who earlier in the day had the spark plug problem, they think they might be able to go all the way. They're currently 10. Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> well, A.J. Foyt will smile for the first time.
first time this season. <laughs> a tough time on old AJ and uh, talk about a great racer though. Huh. Yeah, and he knows that uh, you have problems the first year out. And, uh, you know, I think they've had good runs at different times during the year. <laughs> Look at Rusty with the chrome horn. Boom, he says to Elliot Sadler. Move Sadler over and here he comes. And when he says chrome horn, folks, that means he bumped him just a little bit because they don't have horns on these cars. They have to let you know he's there a little bit quicker. And you can see Elliot Sadler did not put up much of a battle. He moved over and your leader went right on by him. So we continue under green, though there is rain in the area. Earlier today, we had a one-hour red flag for rain. Hopefully, we won't have to deal with that again. TNN Sports live coverage of the ThatLook.com 300 is being brought to you by UAW GM. Assembly line to finish line. Teamwork wins. Welcome back, everybody. The Pontiac of Tony Stewart continues to lead here at New Hampshire International Speedway. There is rain all around us, but it is not falling heavily enough right now to uh, force a caution flag. There is some light rain in the area. You saw Stewart. There's Johnny Benson as we take you back in the field. Johnny is running a lap down now in the 17th spot there in the number 10 machine run for Elliot Sadler in the Wood Brothers Sitco number 21. He's in 18th position. And then you've got Ricky Craven, who led here earlier today from laps 3 through 66. Craven now running in 19th. He, too, is a lap down. The one is Steve Park, the yellow car. He's a couple of laps back in 29th. And Scott Pruitt in the Tide machine is running 30th. He also is a couple of laps down to our race leader, Tony Stewart. There's Ward Burton now. Ward, after the stops of earlier, running in 20th spot. He is one lap down to our race leader. There's 33, Joe Nimichek running second. Now Joe is six seconds back of Tony Stewart, but he is on the lead lap, obviously. Jerry Nadeau is running third. We wait for him into the picture, and there he is. As Nadeau, third on the racetrack, he is... Uh, at this point, seven and three tenths seconds behind Stewart. The 90, that's Ed Barrier, the six Mark Martin. Martin is running fourth. Barrier is four laps down in 36th position. 27 is Bliss, the blue and white car. He's running 33rd. The seven is Michael Waltrip. They're battling for position, Bliss and Waltrip are. Each three laps down. The 94 is Bill Elliott. He's a one lap down in 21st position as we ride with him. You see Dale Earnhardt Jr. out the rear view there. Earnhardt Jr. in 22nd. He is a lap down to our race leader. And the 17, who had clutch problems earlier, Matt Kenseth, he is two laps down in 23rd spot. Also two down is the 11. That's the Ralph's Stores entry for Brett Bodine. Four is Bobby Hamilton. Hamilton is also a couple of laps down in 25th position. Others on the racetrack having made a stop moments ago, the 93 of Dave Blaney. He's in 34th. He's three laps behind our race leader, Tony Stewart. There's Darrell Waltrip. He also being shown four laps down now. DW4 down in 35th position. Then you drop way back and wait for Schrader. who will come in for a pit stop. Kenny running fifth. Hard on the binders to abide by the pit road speed limit. He will drop from fifth place and come in for his pit stop. Ralph? He's only planning on taking two tires on the right side of this car. So Richard Mako goes to work on the front. Josh Gibson goes to work on the rear. They take fuel. The tires are on and he is away. So Schrader making his pit stop now. There's Tony Stewart. One eye on the skies. One eye on the racetrack with rain dancing all the way around. By the way, guys, I didn't want this telecast to go by. We have been in such need of some good news this week in light of all that's taken place. You see where Bobby Allison and Judy Allison got married again earlier this week. Did they? Yes, 
Isn't that great? Oh, that is good. They had obviously yeah. been through so much in the aftermath of both Clifford and Davey passing away. Uh, they had a lot of problems and had gotten divorced. Well, uh, the Kyle Petty, Patty Petty, Adam Petty situation brought them back together, and they got remarried on Monday of this week. Wrenchhead.com with millions of brand name auto parts and accessories to choose from. It's easy to prove you're a Wrenchhead. Hey, are you a Wrenchhead? I'm not going there this week. Wrenchhead.com. <laughs> parts online all the time. This week, next week, anytime. Wrenchhead.com. There's the race leader. There is sixth, seventh, and eighth place. Dale Earnhardt, Dale Jarrett, Jeremy Mayfield. Three of those drivers should have enough fuel. I'm going to tell you something. That's more than a little drizzle. When they started in the corner there, there was a lot of moisture on the windshield. You see it right there as they head down the back straightaway. Of course, it was clearing itself, but it was showing up pretty big. Now, remember, folks, Tony Stewart, from all reports, still has to make a pit stop, as does Jeff Gordon. They are running first and fifth, respectively. So should Stewart have to stop as we expect he would have to to make a fuel stop? Glenn told us that, and certainly all the calculations indicate as such. That would hand the lead over to uh, Joe Nimicek. Now, Nimicek pitted at lap 190, which is only one mile further, 1.058 miles further than uh, Gordon, and two miles further than uh, Tony Stewart. You wonder whether that would be enough? Yeah, probably not. Earnhardt's life is going to have to make a pit stop as well. Dale Earnhardt, uh, he pitted on lap 195. Hey, if nothing happens here, it's going to be Mark Martin's race. Could well be. Because with Stewart and what would assume Nimicek having to pit, Mark, we know, went uh, in the pit lane at 204 and had already run 100 laps today. So uh, if you don't have rain interrupting things, this could be the first win for Mark Martin here at the uh, New Hampshire International Speedway. What about Dale Earnhardt? Let's get an update from his pick. Eli, just talked to crew chief Kevin Hamlin, and he is saying that right now it would be awfully, awfully close. I don't think he's made his decision just yet as to whether or not he would try to run for the checkered flag or if he's going to have to just dive down and take a splash near the very end of the race. Now, Dale pitted at lap 196. So 104 laps, and remember, too, that these laps, folks, I know we just mentioned it, but it's worth mentioning again, they are just over a mile. 1.058 miles around is this racetrack. So uh, it's more than just 100 and some odd miles. And was it not at lap 104 that Tony Stewart ran out of fuel last year trying to win this thing? Exactly. A mind like a steel trap. No, I have notes. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of notes. Well, since you brought it up. Anyway, Tony Stewart, I was talking to the guys, and I said, Tony Stewart always runs out of fuel before Bobby Labonte. You have the same motor, same carburetor, and they said it's the way he drives the car. He's either on the gas or off the gas. He never, ever comes into the throttle easy. And Bobby Labonte drives much easier. He gets better gas mileage. Maybe two laps, three laps better gas mileage than Tony Stewart. Is that a byproduct of his open wheel? experience the driving style difference? I just think he's wide open or stopped. He, he's that type of driver, and, and uh, as far as saving fuel, he wouldn't know what you're talking about. Now we're 35 laps from the finish. But again, we are far from the finish as far as storylines. Rain, rain is going to force the caution to fly. Rain has now intensified enough out in turns three and four. That caution is coming out at lap 266. Tony Stewart will come across as the race leader under the caution, assuming he makes it around here with no problems. And he does. So the leader has the caution, Tony Stewart. And now the question is going to be, uh, where are we as far as uh, weather? 13 teams are on the lead lap. Stewart, Nemechek, Martin, Nadeau, Gordon, and Dale Earnhardt. Jarrett Mayfield, Bobby Labonte, Ricky Rudd, Jeff Bodine, Jeff Burton, and Rick Mast. Those 13 teams on the lead lap. And now the question is, do you go back racing? 
when do you come in for fuel? Not now. I would think, uh, well, or do you? Well, that's no. what they're talking about right now on Tony Stewart's no. radio. They're discussing whether they should come in or not to come in. I would roll the dice, and if I run dry on the racetrack, so be it. What do you think, buddy? I would I would probably stay out, too, Eli. Of course, uh, the real answer is right there, Zipidelli. You could see him talking to Tony Stewart. They're discussing it right now, but I would probably stay out to the last moment because the bottom may drop out. It's all over. Yeah. You've won the race. That's it. I'd stay out and uh, take your chances. You've lost one here on fuel mileage. Uh, try and win one here with a break from Mother Nature if you can. Again, what we're talking about, the fact that Tony Stewart, the race leader, second place Joe Nimichek, fifth place Jeff Gordon, all having to stop for fuel before the race is over. Jeff Burton's going to stop for fuel. Burton is coming in. Burton is coming in at lap 268. So Burton, who is running eighth, is going to drop from eighth down to 11th. Eli, look at the windshield on that car. That tells you how much moisture is out there. They're cleaning it right now, but there was a tremendous amount of water on the windshield itself. Glenn? Well, guys, this is a calculated gamble. Like you said, he was running eighth. He figures right now, if he stops now and goes ahead uh, and makes his stop, and then the rest of the guys have to stop, he knows that Stewart and Gordon uh, and, and also Nemechek have to stop. So there's only 14 cars in the lead lap, I believe, so he's going to gain most of those positions back if the race continues on. If it doesn't, he's lost a few spots, but it's a calculated gamble. By stopping first, if the race goes back to green, Jeff Burton will be the man leading the race. And uh, in the interest of uh, total disclosure, there will actually be at this point 13 uh, on the lead lap. Uh, I mean, so he drops from 8th to 13th, and then you gotta, you got to roll the dice sometimes. We're coming right back. Rain falling again here in New Hampshire. 31 laps from the finish. Andy Petrie and Jack Roush. Everybody watch. Our race leader here in New Hampshire is Tony Stewart with crew chief Greg Zipidelli. They have been a force all season. No, it's not all been easy. There have been some bumps in the road, but there have also been the high times, like a win at Dover and a rain win at Michigan. And now we run in the rain again here at New Hampshire International Speedway. Tony Stewart has led twice today for 153 of the 271 laps. Of course, has had success here, as we had talked earlier, in other forms of racing. Ran in the Indy Racing League here in 96, 97, and 98, and led 93 of the 200 laps here in 1998 and route to the win. He ran second here to Buckshot Jones in a NASCAR Bush Series race back in 1998. And as you can see on the racetrack, if you're a, a veteran observer, you can see that they're starting to lose the racetrack now. That's the, the term NASCAR uses when the gray disappears and the track starts turning uh, darker. That means it's getting much wetter and that the heat from the uh, header pipes is no longer uh, keeping the track dry. All right, so where is that guy who was doing the rain dance for Tony Stewart in Michigan? <laughs> they need that guy on the speedway. Beat the Tom Tom. That's what he's got to have right now is rain to win this race. Greg Zippadelli and the whole crew looking on. Glenn, let's, uh, any, any, any rain dances down there? Well, let's find out. Uh, Greg, you look pretty calm for the situation the way it is. First of all, how far can you go? Uh, I know that you're probably getting pretty close to running out of gas. We're crunching numbers right now. Uh, we're still probably six, eight from uh, having to stop. So, uh, I, I don't know. I, just, uh, I don't know what to say. I'm just trying to... Be calm here. I think they're going to bring us down pit road right now and stop. Hopefully, we're going to get a hell of a thick rain. Rain <laughs> storm here, and this Home Depot Pontiac is going to go to victory lane in the rain again. Uh, I mean, I know I hate to see it end that way for the fans and everything, but uh, man, after the last two times we were here last year, it wouldn't bother me at all. Okay, you heard it straight from the horse's mouth. Here's Steve Burns. Thanks, Glenn. We're with Andy Petrie, the car owner, crew chief on the 33 car of Joe Nemechek. Well, Andy, how does this all factor in? We've got rain. It seems like you've got to stop for gas. Get us up to date. Well, it is kind of complicated right now. We we're going to be about 10 laps short under green, but it's, you know, the run under caution. If they kept doing that, we could make it all the way. I don't think they're going to do that. So if it stops raining and we go back racing with Pitt with one to go and don't know exactly what we'll do yet, but that's what we're faced with. And uh, yeah, the car's ran great, broke foot on.
everybody in Chevrolet. It's been a good day for us. We just hope we, you know, we get a good finish out of it. Andy, you guys have finished 11th two weeks in a row. Are you building momentum as this team starting to turn the corner? Yeah, we've struggled to try to gain momentum this year. We've got a good competitive car and a lot of races, and we've, you know, we've had some problems. We've wrecked a few cars, you know, a couple of motor problems, but uh, we are on the roll right now, and hopefully we can keep it going. All right, thanks, Andy. Let's go to Ralph. Well, Jimmy Fennick has climbed down off the war wagon. Jimmy had a great run going, but it looks like the rain's going to cut you up just a little bit short, huh? Yeah, we had a... Uh... We had them in position uh, uh, when this race with gas mileage. Uh, car wasn't really that strong at the end. We got it pretty close, but we're working on gas mileage to get it. But uh, I don't know. Don't look like we're going to get it today. But still, a third place finish right now here today will help you guys continue to climb back up into the points chase, won't it? Yeah, I mean, it was a good day. The Valvoline team did an excellent job. You know, Jack to go with his carburetors. And our program's getting better. I think we found some stuff. We went testing uh, a couple weeks ago, and this team's really been working hard. Hard and hopefully the back half season we can put it together. There you see the red flag in hand. The caution is still being uh, shown. The caution flies. That's Jimmy Howell, the uh, chief starter for NASCAR's Winston Cup Series. Uh, the red flag does not come out until the last car that is rolling comes to a full stop. And you see the leaders are parked down in turn one. At the back of the line, though, there are still a few machines rolling off of turn four and towards start finish. And then again, David Hoots on the NASCAR radio will say, all right, Mr. Star put out the red and that will happen as soon as Michael Waltrip's car comes to a stop he says display the red the red is out so at uh, 4 53 p.m. Eastern time we've gone to red for the second time today as once more rain is falling here at the New Hampshire International Speedway Welcome back, everybody. The rain delay is underway for the second time today here at New Hampshire. The NASCAR Winston Cup drivers now being allowed to uh, climb from their cars and walk over to both our reporters and the uh, crew from MRN Radio. Tony Stewart's climbing from his machine. Mark Martin getting out of uh, the Valvoline Cummings entry. Let's go back trackside now. Well, Mark Martin is here with us. He's crawled out of the number six. Mark, that car looked awfully strong. Was it good enough to win, do you think? easy uh the guys in front of us had to stop and we didn't so uh and you know everybody that could make it we had covered real good so we were sitting there cruising uh, the last set of tires we got on the car we got the setup right and uh, we were cutting the best laps we'd run all day and uh, no problem with going fuel and uh, the guys in front of us had to stop if this race doesn't get restarted you have gone from first on the points all the way to ninth back up to seventh and closing in quickly on sixth are you feeling better about the performance of the team in general hey this team couldn't help it when parts broke and tires blew out and all that stuff that wasn't there for you know the performance of the team hasn't been the problem we had bad luck five races in a row and uh, i guess some sometimes your luck just goes that way I don't think these guys are done yet, Eli. I don't think so. And if it doesn't resume, and if he finishes third, it'll be his fourth straight top five finish. But, Dick, we, we talked about it earlier. I mean, you knew when he could go as long as he did earlier, you knew it was Mark Martin's race. Buddy, how about when you were racing? Did you have good luck or bad luck with, uh, with rain? Well, I had both. Did you? One time I won in Charlotte on a rain-shortened race. I will tell you, it paid the same thing as when I won it when the sun was out. So uh, <laughs> you have to be in position to win. You understand that. You have to be leading the race to win. But one time in Pocono, I got into the wall, followed the pace car all the way around, and we knew that if it restarted, I was done because right front was knocked back against the uh, door panel. But uh, w we were hoping for rain, and all of a sudden the sun came out. They hooked a record to it, and I watched somebody else take a race that I had like a 12-second lead in. Yeah, you kind of feel for Mark Martin and Jimmy Fennig. Uh, they played their strategy beautifully today, and if it doesn't get going again, uh, they'll come up shy. Steve, who have you got visiting with you? Uh, that would be Mr. Earnhardt there, Eli. Dale, tell us about your afternoon here on this tough track. Been up and down, really. Uh, ran pretty good at times. And then, right now, I just scored a hole in Jarrett and I'm up trying to stay in the dry tracks. It, I'm really surprised NASCAR ran that long with the track that damp. And it was pretty pretty wicked out there if you got out of the track. So uh, we ran a good 15 laps there longer than I thought we would. But, you know, we're trying to get the race in, I reckon, and trying to get, get everybody to go home. But... Uh, we're just uh, buying our time, really. Just, I don't know if we're any better than these guys. Just we can hold them up right now, and we just keep in front of them. We'll be all right. 
It's going to be close on gas. Can, can you make it on gas? Well, I don't know. If we go back green, we might have to do something. <laughs> might have to get two tires and some gas, but uh, right now we're just going to... If we ride a lot more cautions, I think we could make it, but they say the rain's not far from here, the hard rain, so we'll see what happens. Okay, thanks, Dale. Let's go to Glenn Jarrett. Well, thanks, Steve. Uh, the jet black drawer. Uh, golly, I can't talk. <laughs> what are they? Jet dryers? Is that right, Tony? Tony Stewart has been kind enough to come over to us. Uh, Tony, I saw you looking heavenward there, looking for a little help from Mother Nature. You need it. Well, I mean, it put us in the situation we're in. I mean, I don't think we can make it on the field. We're going to have to stop. So, uh, you know, if we'd have came in like everybody else did, knew we were going to come back to green, we would have came in. But, uh, you know, we didn't have that luxury of leading. I mean, you can't chance it. And, you know, we didn't know it was going to stop raining. So. Uh, the weather has put us in a bad position here. As far as I'm concerned, right now, I can just pour rain right now. Tony, you've had an awfully good race car all day. Been obviously the dominant car. You were that way a couple of times here last year. You just haven't been able to get this thing to victory lane as many times here as what it looked like you would. You feel like this place owes you one? I don't know. I mean, I don't. The way I look at it, no track ever owes you anything. I mean, you got to go out and earn it. And, and, you know, last year when we lost because of fuel, we didn't earn the win. And that plain and simple. The track didn't owe us anything. It wasn't track's fault we didn't make it on fuel mileage. So, uh, you know, we just got to go out and do what we can do. Uh, you know, we got a game plan on what happens if we do get back in the cars and get going again. And if it doesn't, then uh, I don't mind not getting in it the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can see he keeps looking heavenward, guys. He wants that rain. Here's Ralph. Well, I'm with Jerry Nadeau, and this time I got the umbrella, okay? And he's currently fourth, but you were running third. How come he slipped back? Uh, I let Mark go by. We, uh, our car's getting a little tight, and uh, we're a fourth-place car. I mean, uh, we, the guys have done an awesome job. This is the best we've ever run all year long. We've run great at Charlotte. We lost an engine. But uh, this is probably one of our best performances all season. So uh, I'm still pretty happy wherever we finish, even if it's top five, top ten. Uh, at least we were here. We led a couple laps. Uh, we put some pressure on the leader. And whatever it gives us, that's what it'll give us. How far away is this team from a win? I mean, you might finish fourth here today. What's missing from a points race win? Um, <laughs> I don't know. We've uh, we've had a strange season this year. We've had an up and down season. Um, I guess you can say it was the Jerry Nadeau roller coaster year. Uh, we've uh, we've had some great runs at a lot of places. Uh, you know, we're getting closer, and, and the way I look at it as a race team, you got to finish in the top ten before you get a top five. Once you get a top five, you know, the wind's right around the corner. So hopefully we get a top five out here today with the MichaelHolland.com car. Who knows, maybe next race at Pocono we'll get a win. And Eli, remember this, if nothing else, he's also going to be the highest finishing Hendrick car. And when you're talking about finishing higher than a three-time champion like Jeff Gordon and a two-time champion like Terry Labonte, not a bad day. No, it would also be his career best finish, Ralph, because he had that fifth at Watkins Glen last year, and if he stays where he is, he'll come home in fourth today. You know who's going to end up being the big loser in all of this deal? Well, two guys, actually. Kenny Schrader. Remember, he was running well, came in and pitted. He was in at lap 251, and he is now in 40th. Uh, place earlier. He'd moved up to 23rd, but I mean, uh, here's a guy who will drop significantly and Sterling Marlin in the Coors machine. He was 7th. He came in for his pit stop and is now 25th, so uh, uh, you have Schrader from 5th to 23rd, Marlin from 7th to 25th, so uh, those are guys who uh, will we'll lose out in the exchange, so Sterling's hoping that uh, this race goes back to green. We have been under the red flag now for nine minutes and eight seconds. It's not dampened the fans' enthusiasm any. We're going to wait and see what Mother Nature has in store for us. Come back. Welcome back, everybody. You see track drying is underway, trying to keep at least even with Mother Nature. By the way, if you're wondering, the, the NASCAR Winston Cup points right now, Bobby Labonte is uh, still leading the points. If the race ends right now, he would uh, have a 45-point advantage over Dale Earnhardt. But uh, lots yet to go as we kind of outweigh Mother Nature here. Well, that's an impressive bit of rain gear. Let's go back trackside. Well, guys, I was, I was standing by with Joe Nemechek trying to wait for the uh, jet dryer. I said it right that time. went by, and, uh, man, Joe, I tell you, you in New Hampshire, got to be a great love affair. You run this racetrack so well once again today. Ah, uh, the Oakwood Chevy's running good. I uh, got to say, say thanks to the whole, the whole Andy Petrie team, especially the motor shop. They put a new motor in this morning. I uh, didn't think the one yesterday run quite right, so this thing's run flawless all day. 
I just wish I could get up there and race with the 20. You know, I, I think we're about even on old tires, but, uh, uh, you know, that last stop, we had a little bit of trouble under the stop, and it got me behind a little bit. But, uh, you know, we're right on the borderline of making it on gas, so it's, it's one of those deals. I want it to rain, but I want to race Tony. So, hey, we'll take it. Well, you have, have had a good run. I want to ask you this. Uh, in addition to the engine change, you didn't have that good a qualifying run, and that surprised me because of your love of this racetrack and how well you get around it. What, what did you do different to the car uh, to get the thing up front? Well, the problem was we were like fourth or fifth in practice. We had a shot at the pole, so we put the pole set up in it. We put the pole set up in it, and I slid sideways going into one. It wasn't very good, so, uh, you know, we should have been in top, top, top five qualifying, and we just messed up a little bit, and myself included, because I agreed to make some changes, and I should have known better, but uh, uh, this place is tough. You know, it's probably one of the toughest places you, can, you have to qualify at and, and also race at, but uh, my car is running good. It certainly is. Joe Nemechek loves this racetrack, regardless of how tough it is, Steve. All right, thanks, Clay. We just caught up with Kenny Schrader. Kenny, uh, Eli Gold was just talking about your uh, maybe tough luck running in the top five and had to pit again for gas. Well, a little car was good, you know, but uh, we all made a call, you know, and uh, we got a little bit of track position by not filling it quite up, uh, thinking this rain was going to come a little bit earlier. and uh, <laughs> Backfired. Backfired, big time. All right, thanks, Kenny. Well, yeah, sometimes you come up big time, sometimes you come up feathers. Well, that explains it. Uh, looking at when he pitted, didn't seem as if he should have had to pit again, but that's why he didn't put all the gas in it. Folks, it is going to be a while here, either for the track to dry or if the heavy uh, rains come. Ricky Rudd talking with uh, Bobby Labonte. Uh, we are going to be tossing it to some uh, alternative programming here in just a moment or so while uh, track drying continues. Uh, find out where your favorite driver is uh, running or sitting right now. Stewart, he only has two laps on Nimichek as far as fuel is concerned. You heard uh, Joe saying we're right on the bubble of making it. And they came in at lap 190. Stewart pitted at 188. So, uh, man, it can be a game of inches and literally in, in this sport. <laughs> they see some of the others. See where Schrader and uh, Marlin have dropped to. And there you see all the others, including the fellows who were involved in accidents earlier today. Terry Labonte, Chad Little, John Andretti, Jimmy Spencer, Robert Presley done for the day. We're going to stick around here, and we'll be coming back periodically, but American Shooter will be coming your way as some alternative programming right here on TNN. See you shortly. We are back live here at New Hampshire International Speedway. Greg Zipadelli says, how long are we going to wait? Are we going to wait a while? There is some rain continuing to fall but NASCAR still has hopes of getting the final 27 laps of today's race in. So we will wait right here. Hopefully you folks will stay with us. But now let's go back to more of American Shooter here on TNN. Then we'll return to New Hampshire with another update in 30 minutes. Welcome back, everybody. Well, it is over here in New Hampshire. The ThatLook.com 300 has gone to Tony Stewart by virtue of the rain that has fallen now at lap 273. So Tony Stewart wins, and he is our Bryant Cool driver of the race, burning hot. Call Bryant to the rescue at 1-888-999-BRYANT. Everybody was just sitting around waiting hoping but the rain intensified here in the last short while and we were unable to get the race going greg zipadelli and the crew our red wing work hard pit crew of the race red wing shoe company america's best choice for durable comfortable footwear and buddy baker we had been speculating do you pit do you stay out obviously with the rains having hit as they have it was a good thing for tony stewart that he stayed out sometimes you have to roll the dice they made the right choice but they had to be in the lead to win this race and they, they did everything right all day long tony stewart has led 36 percent of the race laps in the three new hampshire events in which he has competed in nascar winston cup competition i mean as we talked earlier dick with his irl successes here finishing second to buckshot jones in the nascar bush series uh, 
when you get in that groove at a certain racetrack, uh, you do awfully well. Well, he's in the groove at every racetrack. He has led every single event since Richmond, and he is decidedly on a roll. Look at those points. 76 ahead. For actually, uh, 68 there from first to third, as the unofficial numbers show. Bobby Labonte, Dale Earnhardt, Dale Jarrett atop the points. They are moving victory lane into the uh, relative dry of garage stall number seven in the NASCAR Winston Cup garage area. Tony Stewart is there with Glenn Jarrett. Well, thanks, Eli. Tony, congratulations. Victory number three. Finally, victory number one at New Hampshire, even though in the rain. What a great day for you. Yeah, it really is. Uh, you know, I was sitting here under this red thing, and boy, it's unfair. The weather was treating us, but... Uh, you know, with the way that first red happened, we didn't come in and pit like everybody else did. And, you know, we elected for track position just because we didn't know whether it was going to rain again or not. So, uh, you know, having a second red, it was really going to hurt us. So, uh, yeah, actually, it, it ended up helping us this time, but makes up for the first time that it happened to us. Well, this last rain delay has lasted, I guess, maybe an hour or a little more. Have you, have you developed ulcers worrying about that rain? Because you had to stop. I'll tell you what, Greg Zipidelli and I, we're going to have to start... Uh, getting you know hair color for men because we're both getting gray hairs worrying about all this and uh, we're not, we're not going to live too many more years having ulcers like the way we are today so uh, i'm just glad it's over finally i mean we we had the fastest car so i don't feel the least bit guilty about winning this thing this way uh, I mean, we were fast all day and and uh, you know ran up front all day so i mean I, I felt like we we did our part to earn this your team's on quite a roll right now. Uh, you've uh, you won a couple races there. You had a chance at Pocono, chance at Daytona. Uh, you're there in the hunt every week. It's got to make you feel good. Yeah, I mean, I, I would trade these wins in for consistency, and that's what I told them after the first win of the year for us. But, uh, you know, that's what's happened finally. I mean, we, we're back on track where we were last year, and this is about the point in the year where it happened that way last year, too. So uh, we're just hoping for a repeat the rest of the year now. I'll tell you what, congratulations. I'm going to give you next weekend off. Here's Eli. All right, guys, thank you. The fifth win for Pontiac in the year 2000. Tony Stewart becomes the first driver this season to win three races. Dover, Michigan, and now New Hampshire. When we come back, a finishing run down. TNN Sports live coverage of the ThatLook.com 300 has been brought to you by Haviland Formula 3 Motor Oil. Add more life to your car. Well, there you see the finishing order. Best finish of the year for Joe Nimichek. Best finish of the season for the 25 of Jerry Nadeau. Jeff Gordon, another top five finish. That'll be six straight for him. Some good runs, guys. Saw Dale Earnhardt, 15th top 10 for Earnhardt this season. That's the most of all the drivers. Other notes as we look at the finishing order, Dale Jarrett, ninth straight top 10, including six top fives. You also saw Matt Kenseth there moments ago as he found himself in uh, 19th spot, the highest finisher among all the rookies. Guys, always a pleasure. See you down the road. Thank yeah, you so much. Yeah, we will. Good race today. Lots of interesting stories. Some great storylines. And, of course, we will be back with you throughout the latter portion of the season. We'll be with you at Dover and again here at Rockingham and Phoenix. So lots of racing coming your way on TNN Sports. That's going to do it for us from a rainy Loudon, New Hampshire. For Buddy Baker and Dick Bergren, Glenn Jarrett, Steve Burns, Ralph Shaheen, I'm Eli Gold. Thanks so much for joining us. Our congratulations to Tony Stewart, who becomes the rain man for this weekend. So long from New Hampshire.